Now, like, it's 32 past. If we go for another three minutes, that'll be 35. That's a nice round number to start. It's not even a round number, it's an odd number. Like, no, round, round doesn't round. mean even. It's both. <laughs> round is not a declension in mathematics. All right, but can you tell your left from your right? Yes, I can. Yeah, if I hold my hands up, the left looks like an L. <laughs> We've been trying to teach that to Benji for fucking years. And three three never... times. <laughs> three times in about nearly two decades I've got when, that wrong. When, you... you're, when you're in a retirement home getting visited by your grandkids, I hope you realise that I'm still going to be telling that story. I don't care if I'm fucking dead. I will make audio logs and leave them strategically around your life. Anywho, uh, uh, let's have some reminders from last session. Cusco is being salty and no longer considers himself part of the command squad. I believe that was in character. That's not a that's not a per, uh, like a personal judgment. Weselin gone bollock people. That is your custode. Sorry, what did we say they were? Uh, Chad Stodes. custodies. Yes, that, that's what I said. Custodies. It's your custodies observer. Uh, yeah, custodies gone bollock people. The trial of Michiko uh, Michelko also scheduled this session. Uh, young Nicholas is happy to be removed from command in character and does not wish to be elected. He is also slorped due to a stomach bug, which means he's been replaced with... I thought you said he had, you said he had a sore throat. I think it was a stomach bug. Wait, let me double check. Oh, oh, so I've got it. Wait, either way, he's not here. Yeah. He'd give you two options to pick from. <laughs> yeah, it says really rough stomach, but for the record, he misspelled rough, and instead of typing it as like rough, rough terrain, he typed it like rough Tudor neck rough. <laughs> like ruffles? Yeah, exactly. Oh my god. Ooh, or how people type how dogs talk. Rough. I feel like that's one F. Maybe that's just me. No, it's two Fs. It's two Fs. Definitely two Fs. Woof is one F. So. Schwartz in instead, we have Captain Carpy. Oh yeah, I forgot he was Captain Brist, wasn't he? Yeah, indeed. And uh, since we do not have a player character slotting in, your will be, I suppose, rather than like Captain Carpy being on the stand and giving his evidence against Weselin, the way we'll probably frame this is your giving evidence against Captain Carpy. We wouldn't have done this if we had young Nicholas, but as we don't, you know gonna have it be a little bit more PvE because otherwise it's me playing both Weselin and Captain Carpy and that's both not fun and a lot of effort I hate having conversations with myself but that's all I do these days are we are we trying to, to to throw Captain Carpy under the bus? Do you it's, mean or? it's up to you? Actually, I'm. It's super hot over here, so I'm just going to go like nab a water. But we'll probably start about a week after the conquest. Things are starting to go pretty well. You've sorted out the last of the fighting in Port Vorant has died down. You've uh, sorted out what's relevant on the planet and, and already posted down your Imperial Army garrison um, and begun. I'm going to gonna say as well. Yeah. Sorry. Oh no, I was like, gonna I'm, say... I'm not sure. Like you say, giving evidence against Captain Carpy, he hasn't really done anything wrong. Yeah, he had a lot of people in insu- be very insubordinate and not carry out orders. Well, I think so that's, that's... He's, he's not proved to be excellent at command, but equally, like, so completely... one of the main problems was we were shit heels. Completely <laughs> losing control over your forces is not a not a. No, that's what I mean when I say he's not he's not been great at command, yeah. but equally. I have I have a suggestion. Can we yeah. actually consider um, Nick's character here, but off with a stomach bug, so we can still shit talk? You know the character <laughs> if we need to. No, where I'm, is the I'm captain? Gonna say it'll be, no, I'm going to say it's Captain Carpy, and you can anything that you consider. In fact, because it's an NPC rather than a player character, you can be a little bit harsher and read more nastily into motives. Because I'm okay with you throwing Captain Carpy under the bus much more because it's not going to ruin the experience for young Nicholas. Um, okay. That said, I, I, so I will go nap my water in a second, but I'll also say that you all don't have to throw Captain Carpy under the bus. I would say discuss now what your strategy is going to be. If you're going to have a joint one, if you're going to have like multiple separate ones, what are you going to do? Um, so it'll be a week after the conquest has been completed. You've been dealing with the sorted administrative tasks, and later today you will have your meeting with uh, Observer Wesley. I will be right back. Discuss amongst yourselves. Um...
I like, I like, it feels weird to throw the captain under the bus completely. I, I'm going to say the same thing I did at the end of the first campaign, which, which is that given that Carpe is the same, <coughs> has the same follow track, technically he, he did the same things on Venus, he's a fine warrior and an excellent marine, however he's unsuited to line command and should be moved to a post better suited to his, uh, his particular talents. Yeah, I can sort of agree with that. Like, there were several fuck ups, which indicate that whilst the character, whilst Captain Carpe is a formidable warrior. I mean, what really went wrong this campaign? We none of, none them of to us compliance, to right? Yeah, we none of us listened to him. <laughs> we only caused a couple dust storms, right? The, all the objectives are pretty solid. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Not only did I get water, I also found the remains of yesterday's margarita in the fridge. Lucky boy. Don't drink. Do not drink the oil. It's not oil. It's yesterday's margarita. Tastes like oil. No, it tasted like petrol. I found a way to solve that. Petrol is a derivation of oil. Yeah. Fucking cake is a derivation of flour, but they're not the same thing. Uh, hmm. I don't know if you know how cake, cake is a work. compound of flour. Yeah. <laughs> okay, not a derivation. Got, motherfucker. You can render anyway. flour into cake. Yes, sorry. Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone else have anything to say about Captain Carpe, other than me and Ollie, or...? I'm um, just wondering what we're answering for here. I think the campaign went swimmingly, other than a few <laughs> things in command. Yeah, like, my only thing to say is, uh, leaving a medic in command of, like, a battalion, like, probably wasn't a good idea. Like, that, that's pretty much my only comment on my end of things. I, I, I think I'm, I, I'm gonna say that it felt like we were slightly disorganized, but that was caused by us not listening to command. <laughs> yeah, so maybe don't say that one. <laughs> Rounds back into, like, Benji's original comment. Mm. So, uh, remember that this is a bit of a prisoner's, a prisoner's, uh, dilemma scenario there, Mackie. You are one of, what, three lieutenants? Two lieutenants? Oh, three lieutenants. Oh, no, two. One is a tech marine. You're yeah. one of two lieutenants. When people start blaming command, there are, broadly speaking, three figures immediately culpable. There's yourself, there's Koya, and there's Captain Carpy. Blame does not have to be delivered entirely to any one of those, but it also could be, and it's not necessarily going to be on Carpy. Mm. Where that, man. does your self-preservation and uh, where do your self-preservation and honor meet? They meet at the battlefield of honesty. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, they do. That's valid. Uh, I guess we'll see who wins. So, what are what are people's tacts going into this? And is there any information you'd like to have beforehand as well? So, you um. How many how how many people is this uh this this what's his face this custody um killed before? How many command squads is he anni- annihilated? I mean, officially, that type of thing is is thoroughly unconscionable. Officially, in practice, there are always rumours. Yeah. What rumours well. have we heard about custody guards in general? I tell you uh, what, and if any specific, we, let's, we let's, prob- I will take from someone. Oh, holy fuck! These are weirdly messed up. Do so we have common law Imperium? Yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking. I mean, we technically, this is. Prob- does anyone have forbidden law Imperium? I don't know because there's rumours yeah. about it. We forbidden law would you would be you know what happened? No, because it'd still be a test. It was thoroughly hushed up. Yeah, but the room, the, the rumours surrounding it. Will okay, I tell you, those rumours. I tell you what. Here's here's what I will do for you. I won't make you roll for it, but you've certainly heard rumours. Like officially, the custodians are the emperor's uh, bodyguards and messengers and watchers, and, and you know, g- generally not quite his favoured sons, but they're 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 his companions. His companions, and there there's a certain resonance that goes along with that. But there are always rumours about things, and for those of you who are perhaps a little bit more politically inclined, or people like Cusco who were around during the Terran unification whilst it was actively being prosecuted, even though the rest of you would have been on Terra, but you would have been mostly kids for a lot of it, um, 
there are occasional whispers of uh, Mount Ararat. Aratat. Aratat? It's Ararat. Ararat is Ararat. It is Ararat, yeah. Oh, I heard, a, I heard an audiobook once where it was Aratat. Don't you like... fucking come at me in Armenian law, Benji. This is my shtick. Don't you know about Bosnia? Well, oh, Armenia and Bosnia are not the same place. I'm a very no, I, yeah, I'm not. I suppose Tyrannus is still technically a hero at this point in time. He's so, not been forgotten. <clears throat> God, where the fuck were we? Yes, you will have heard whispers of Mount Ararat, the, the great tragedy where the Emperor's last Thunder Warriors gave their lives to defeat... I forget exactly who, but uh, to, in a, a final and glorious battle. There are those who whisper that that's not entirely the truth. That's not quite what happened. And there are occasional comments that the custodies had a hand in it. These are the darkest and most treasonous of whispers. But from your position, there are things you might occasionally have heard from unreliable sources. What do? Hmm. Oh, I suppose also... From your personal experience, all of you would have memories of that tall, tall man you met. The tall Astartes. But he wasn't wearing armor. Neither of any legion, nor the Astartes standard of coal grey, I think, for the time. Nor, uh, nor the custodies gold. You obviously took him for a space marine. What else could he be? But in retrospect, perhaps... A custodies, certainly tall enough for it. Perhaps even a little bit too tall. How fair is? I don't know what you're talking I about. I believe his name is Omegon. <laughs> and, uh. And you never did see your captain again, nor so much as hear his name whispered. Um, I've already delivered a report to him on this whole thing, so. I presume he knows what my thoughts on the matter are. Textually, uh, yes, but for the sake of the players, and I suppose the recording to a lesser extent, would you like to sum it up for us? I, I do have a text document. I was right, I wrote it earlier this week. I'm just not entirely happy with it. It's trying, it's trying to role-play, write a report. It's just kind of difficult. Uh, it's been... I don't know if it's... It's probably a little bit late for like submitting yeah. that mid-session, unless it's fairly yeah. brief. Do you, like, you can just give us the bullet point version. You know, What's the Cliff Notes version of the shit you've told Wesley? Anything particularly important or incriminating, I would say, especially, is worth bringing up? I mm, don't think there's anything incriminating. I think the most incriminating thing was talking a summation, a summation at the end where I was talking about how we've got some serious flaws with the Legion at the moment, given they all went kill crazy. <laughs> And that needs to be looked into. So you're saying you didn't mention he, say? Oh, sorry, I didn't mention say what? You didn't mention say that like the rest of the command squad immediately deviated from the order of battle. Or... Oh no, that was like the second line. Okay, I so said that, in actual fact, there's a fair amount of incriminating stuff. I, I presumed he noticed that. <laughs> yes, but also there is a difference between I noticed this and here is a corroborated report from someone who participated. I did type it out in the report, so I would have said that to him. Or the uh, bit where the commander... Yeah, I mean, this is what I'm saying, is is clarify for me anything anything that you think is notable that you would expect the custodies to be raising, so I can... Uh... Uh, I basically just gave a completely truthful act and accurate representation of the events. <laughs> I didn't sugarcoat it. I even, mentioned the bit where, I even mentioned the bit where I disobeyed orders and just turned off my comms and stopped listening to the captain. Yeah, I do remember clarifying that. Um, how did you deal with the uh, Mechanicum situation, where the Mechanicum just justifiably, arguably... I didn't this? mention that because I didn't know about it, because I was on planet at the time, and I had turned off my comms. So from your point of view, it's just that, like, Titans should have been deployed and never were. No, because we decided not to deploy the Titans because of the risk of having them destroyed on the way down. Uh, even after you had overwhelming air superiority, then. Uh, that's true. I suppose I just didn't think of it. Yeah, fair. Doesn't have to be a big thing if you uh, didn't want it to be. That's reasonable. Cool. Uh, anyone else got any thoughts or like things you might have sent Wesleyan's way? I would have quite optimistically regaled the tale of our glorious conquest and how great I am. <laughs> I would have given a full report on the uh, on the spooky 
spooky fortress that uh, myself and middling Nicholas disabled. <laughs> Along with my loyal Havoc squad. Um, I, uh, I would say as well, don't. Uh, you probably already said it to him. Don't say we're the Havoc squad and we're going to cause some chaos to him. That's metagaming. I, I know, know but he's always he has sort of, oh, absolutely no, just... no way of knowing that that's a bad way of phrasing it. It's just a word. <sighs> I know, but just like, do we have to at this point in the game get put on? Yeah, maybe we finally learn that it's not right to say. <laughs> we are <laughs> learning know. moment. Is he, the, is he... uh, the custodians are officially not allowed to say that to you for the record. Oh, so they'll just like sort of be like, oh, <laughs> let us continue. Yeah, I mean, no, they'll, even... they'll put us on, they'll put us straight to the top of the list of people we need to watch out for. Exactly, because they're not even really supposed to, they're not supposed to let you know that they know even. Um, to be clear, the Emperor doesn't have like a complete strategy of not telling people about chaos whatsoever, but he portrays them as, he portrays the warp as filled with strange and exotic xenos, which from a certain point of view is correct, but he really undersells how alien the Xenos are in this case. Um, and even then, like, knowledge of them and the things they get up to and, and the ways they can break into reality and how and what's dangerous about them is thoroughly repressed. And though it's occasionally revealed to individual members or uh, part of the base marine legions, that's thoroughly not something that's done commonly, nor something that is placed in the hands of an individual custodius without direct permission from someone markedly more superior. Okay. Cool. Uh, I guess the only person left to check in with then is is Cusco. Do you have anything, bearing in mind that you were still relieved of your command by Captain Carpy? I'm just going to say something along the lines of like Bones from Star Trek. God damn it, I'm a medic man, not a commander. Uh, I tried my best. I shouldn't have been there in the first place. Mm. Yeah, there were two lieutenants in the field. Neither of them were commanding the main Astartes force, and the captain himself didn't actually take the field until the last conceivable moment when the battle was already functionally won. Slightly worse, um, because I was given the full... I did tell him directly this. One of the lieutenants directly yes. told the medic to take command. Uh, no, that was... It goes out. No, that was me. Remember when we, we met up in Marotha after... And I said to Carl, well, you go oh, south and you. burn Zalona, and I'll go yeah. north and yeah. take the Marotha Metroplex egg. So that happened. Sorry, really well, that was initially going to be with a um, relatively small amount of Marines until all the others came out of the tunnels, and then it suddenly yeah. became half the Legion. <laughs> so Very true. So, it's about a week after the Conquest when you are all alerted via assorted runners that you will be required to audience before Weselin in uh, his chambers towards the end of the day. It's a sombre affair. Each of you expected to turn up sans armour. Well, I know. We're on the, we're on the Obsidian Heart. We, we do what, walk around in it all the time. What's my yeah. state in terms of mobility at the moment? Uh, so they're currently preparing decent mechanical limbs for you. You've got um, interim prosthetics on at the moment. So am I able to walk on my own? Yeah, you can walk on your own. You, you've got like Excellent. basic hands and legs. They wouldn't do up do you very well in a combat zone at all. And if you run too strenuously, you might smash. Or like otherwise, use too much force, you might smash them. But like they'll they'll do you for the moment, basically. Sure. Basically, the, the equivalent of like slightly extra shit, poor quality cybernetics, because they're they've not really done any of the groundwork for actual implants yet. So they're they're just. Stuff that's been slapped over your stumps to make you work for the time being. Sure. But you don't have your servo harness or anything as you're unarmed. You all arrive at Weslin's chambers more or less at the same time, within a couple of minutes of each other, functionally. And uh, the door slides open revealing a golden gilded chamber. Not too large, but inside sits Weslin, atop a rather high-backed wooden chair adapted for his large custodies physique, wearing a simple cloth robe. Was that Benji? 
I was about to remark to myself, huh, I'm surprised the chair isn't gold. As you look at it, it is actually faintly, like, there are marks of gold livery ingrained into it. It's slightly gold, but it's more of a subtle effect. There it is. <clears throat> he beckons you in. One by one, you file in. There's a series of small, somewhat comfortable-looking chairs, which are, unusually for your general experience, just a little bit too big for your frame arrayed in front of you. Novel. <laughs> it's a unique experience to be an Astartes, sat in furniture and feeling too small for it. Or, if not unique, then certainly, as I say, uncommon. I'd say I would like to salute him, Lord Weselin, and then sit down. He uh, nods and returns your salute with a speedy Aquila. I was going to say, we flash in Aquilas yet? I'll flash an Aquila. Or a Cold Mechanicum, if we've got that yet. Um, I think we're doing the Legion salute, which is the, the hand across the chest. Do a Jazz Quilla? God damn it, we're not doing Jazz Quillas. Oh, that should be our Legion salute. No, never mind. He's, he's, <laughs> not, he's not part of the Legion, is the thing. Uh, but yeah, you do have the Imperial Aquila. In fact, the Imperial Aquila is actually, as a salute, is adopted to um, include Mars, whereas, because uh, the old one is the old um, clenched fist for for just unified terror, and that obviously doesn't include Mars at all, so. Yeah, I do an Aquila. Cheeky Aquila. He nods at you. Lieutenant Koya. Lieutenant Makilo Totek. Apothecary Cusco and uh, Tech Marine Coatlebox. How are your wounds recovering, Brother Tech Marine? I can't say I've been worse, but I'm doing all right. I laugh a little bit. Anyone who's doing worse than you is probably dead. The uh, Castellius chuckles a little bit. Well, the four of you will note that I have not invited Captain Carpy to this meeting. His meeting will be held separately. Not too long after this one, I suspect. I would like to gather your testimony on the events that happened throughout this campaign. I have received some preliminary reports from certain members of you. His eyes play over Mackie and Koya in turn, before coming to rest on Coatlemox. Some of these have been more disturbing than others. Before we begin, I would like to ask if any of you have anything that you would like to say about your commanding officer and the execution of the campaign. Any explicit comments? I would like to comment the same as I did at the conclusion of the Venusian Compliance. Captain Carpe, then Brother Sergeant Carpe, is a fine warrior and an excellent legionnaire. He is, however, wholly unsuited to line and or field command, and should therefore be moved into an area more fitting for his talents. The Custodes raises an eye. Raises an eye? <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's so incredibly disturbing. The custodies raises an eyebrow. Eye socket twitching in its secondary <laughs> socket. <laughs> like a fancy washing machine. <laughs> uh, transhumanism. <clears throat> Unusual to hear someone speak with such candor about members of their own legion to, he looks down at himself, an outsider. Could you tell me more about why you think this? The custodian's face remains impassive, though you note his eyes occasionally flicking over the other legionnaires in the room. Simply his actions. Like I say, during the Venusian campaign, he would prove himself to be an excellent warrior and exemplary, exemplary legionnaire following our directives to the letter and ensuring that our mission was carried out. However, his skills at commanding 
leave a lot to be desired, and he should, of uh, course, be moved to a role where his talents can best serve the Emperor. I speak not to an outsider in my mind. We are all part of the Legio, because we here are part of the Legio Astartes, who are here to serve as the Emperor's hand in his prosecution of the wars across the galaxy. And you are you serve at his right hand. We all serve the same master. Some are merely more directly serving that master. Your attitude you notes know, that I am so sorry, brother. I should note that uh, our brother captain's command was quite thoroughly tested on both campaigns by our members. If I am to be thoroughly honest. <laughs> So you would say that the Brother Captain had trouble keeping his warriors under control? I believe that would be a fair comment. Weslin taps several things on a a little data slate hidden on the the tiny desk in front of him, and a series of hololithic images are played through the air in front of you, showing the initial carnage in Zaragot, a marine drenched in the gore of a human he's currently ripping in two, someone in Zalona, Another marine of completely indistinct, uh, their legion livery completely indistinguishable beneath the two, three, four, no, five layers of separate overlapping skin wrapped around them like a wet, cloying cloak. And then a uh, picture of the Vox station in Marotha Metroplexic and the skinned corpse of the local radio personality. Yeah, no one ever got anything about Fort St. Stannis then. We didn't skin anyone in that. <laughs> exactly. Well, you you did, you one. blew the place up afterwards. Rick, don't skin people. <clears throat> Surprisingly easy command to follow. <laughs> you would define these images as uh, experiencing moderate challenge. I would quibble slightly with at least one of the images. Honourable West, Honourable War Weather. Interesting. Do you think this brutality is justifiable? The final image, certainly. The people of the Morothan Metroplex had already sh- shown that they were willing to harden their hearts in defiance of the Emperor's offer of mercy. I was merely showing them the price of said defiance with a singular act of brutality that would break their resolve. The other two images were of Marines run uncontrollable. The final one... A regrettable act, but a necessary one. Which of these images occurred on your watch, Lieutenant? Only the final one, sir. Interesting. And you feel that this is... upholding the ideals of the Emperor and his glorious Imperium. To skin a human being live on the air before hundreds of thousands, potentially millions of listeners. I do, sir. I remember the stories been stories when I first entered Basic, the Church of the Lightning Stone, North and Dew, all showing the Emperor's true. The human unification cannot be allowed to fall by the wayside because we were not strong enough to pursue it. If I had not done, it, done this thing, then the Morothan Metroplexy may have continued to hold out in the vain hope that we would not have the stomach to do what needed to be done. The custodies cocks his head. You consider the Marothan civilization to be on the same level of abhorrence as the Pan-Pacific Empire. He burps. As the, <laughs> yeah. As the pan- I was like, Rick? Is that you? As the pa- Yes. Your custodies observer, Rick Weselin Sanchez. <laughs> <clears throat> no, um... You would consider the Marothan Metroplexic to be on the same level of abhorrence as the Pan-Pacific Empire. No, sir. What I mean to say is that a singular act, done swiftly and with utter surety, no matter how horrifying or brutal it was to an individual person, saved the rest of that Metroplexic, a unique human civilization, from futility and pointless resistance against an overwhelming foe. The ends justify the means. As I was taught, sir. Oh, shit, sir. 
Out character. I learned it from watching you. <laughs> <laughs> the custody. Do as I say, not as I do. The custody's face remains impassive. I see. He uh, turns back to the tech marine. And you, Brother Coatlemox. Did any of these options happen? Uh, options. Did any of these images happen on your watch? Uh, I was on the drop in Zaragoza, sir. On the drop. Uh, according to the report I received from Brother Coya, you were in command of the forces in Zaragoza, at least during the initial drop. Yes, that'd be correct, sir. And you, he gesticulates, endorse this or consider it necessary? Oh, I'm trying to remember the exact words I gave to the Marines. I think I just let them... Oh, yeah, that was when I let them completely loose. You, oh, to be yeah. fair, did tell them don't kill the civilians, and then immediately gave them, like, a loophole that was kill anyone who hasn't fled the area in the next 30 seconds. So you gave the city, yes. like, an impossible deadline to evacuate, and then authorised complete murder of anyone who hadn't evacuated within that 30 seconds. I might be missing the time frame, but it was very low. Oh, well, sir. The battle had just started, and I felt our Astardi should let their swords loose. We had tactical objectives in mind, although it didn't quite work out as intended. You directly went against the tactical objectives you deployed <laughs> into the heart of the city. Ah, uh, yes, but I didn't pay enough attention to the deployment or <laughs> How much of that little exchange was in character? I Hopefully didn't done. mean it to be in character. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. It didn't sound it, like it. That's it, why it, I double it would have it. been. It would have been in my report. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. So in that case, Wesleyan looks down and notes. According to the uh, report I received, it sounds like you had tactical objectives and immediately disregarded them in favor of brutalizing the nearest population center you were able to be deployed to. How do you feel about this? I feel it wasn't handled in the most brutal of manners. <laughs> I uh, I will take a, a speedy. Worse. I will take a speedy logic check, please. Uh, do we have common law adeptus astartes? We do have common law. Well, technically, legio astartes. Yeah. Does Creed Creed should know about Cerberus? Was that a ninety-three? <laughs> yes. Fuck me. No, nah, you're doing everything fine. Just keep going. It's all okay. I'm not going to get myself executed. <laughs> yeah, Kree should know about Cerberus and 1211 at this point. I'm sorry, I don't know. Like, you say Cerberus and I think Loken. Uh, who are you okay. referring to? Cerberus, the Cerberus insurrection is the first deployment outside of the solar system of the World Eaters. Oh, oh sorry, yeah. the, uh, the Warhounds, the one yeah. where they get sent in to secure the asteroid with three million people on it five min- five hours yeah. later. Every single person is dead. Yeah. Why did you kill them all? I wasn't told to take prisoners. <laughs> yeah. Thank so, you, uh, murder boys. Well, perhaps a bit aggressive. I do feel we were within our objective parameters. <laughs> I see, and you would say that these objective parameters match the strategy set by Captain Carpy. Ah, no, there was an error in my deployment. I did realise... Yes, according to the uh, objectives as I've seen them written down, the initial plan called for you to uh, deploy south of Zaragoza and then use terror tactics to flush a refugee stream north. Instead, it seems you deployed directly to the centre. Well, out of character, I didn't notice we were supposed to deploy in a specific location, so I just picked the middle, but... (laughs) I guess in character I didn't look at the commands properly. So, yeah, that may have been a tactical error on my part, not reviewing our orders as thoroughly as I should have. So you admit fault? You consider this to be fault on your end? The deployment of the drop pods, I do. Interesting. Don't give me that smile, you make me scared. (laughs) Someone's going to get executed. Someone's going to get executed. <laughs> yeah, the question is who? The uh, custody's eyes turned to Cusco. Did any of these actions happen on your watch? Uh, our character, you're going to have to refresh me on specifically. There I... was one skinned corpse in Marotha, one picture of someone in Zaragot being torn apart and their guts scattered over the marine, currently tearing them apart, and one picture of a marine in Zalona where you genuinely couldn't make out chat delivery because they were wearing six separate, recently flayed skin suits. Um, in that case, like, 
If we want to be technical, then it would be in Zalona. However, I want to point out that as an apothecary, I never should have been in tactical command at any given point. Interesting. According to a report I received, you received your tactical command of the overwhelming majority of Astartes' forces in the fields from Lieutenant Koya. Is that correct? Technically. It is correct, sir, yes. Why do you feel Captain Koya put you in this position? Because we are familiar with each other, sir. So you would say Captain Koya's pl- uh, trust was misplaced? In regards to the ability to command a tactical formation. I see. As I, I understand out, it, sir. Captain Koya, if you please. Uh, Captain Koya? Oh, Lieutenant Koya. As I understand it, took the most tactically inclined marines with him on his infiltration option into Marotha, leaving you with the more berserk and less controllable fa- uh, of the mob despite your relative lack of command experience and lack of formal authority over them. Is this correct? It wouldn't need to be, uh, appear to be the case. Koya, do you have anything you would like to bring up about this? Yes, sir. I had full confidence in my Legion brother here. The only thing I did not anticipate with this action, I remember telling him at the time, head south, burn Zalona if you have to, to force compliance, but make sure that the world complies. I was unaware of just the depths that our brothers would sink to in their berserk fury. It had not been demonstrated on Venus, it had not surfaced in the years we have spent campaigning. It was unexpected. It was completely out of left field. The custodian looks you straight in the eye. Would you draw any correlation? Or, to be more strictly accurate, any causation between this being Captain Carpy's first command and this rapid surfacing of bloodthirsty tendencies in his marines? I would not possibly say so. I am not an apothecary, and it is not my position to criticise anyone or anything for falling to their instincts. Extremely I fair. Not, I could not know. He immediately turns to Cusco. Would like to, uh, apothecary, okay. would you say that anything has been, uh, that this the apothecary, uh, brother apothecary the same question? As a uh, my official capacity of apothecary, I would certainly say that the correlatory, uh, correlatory evidence would indeed suggest that, that there is potential uh, forming across the uh, data set. Would you consider this sinister or simply incompetence? Incompetence may be a particularly harsh term. Uh, personally, I would say more akin to inexperience. There is no room for inexperience in the Great Crusade. We are the Emperor's finest, and we must be perfect. Strictly speaking, sir, you are the Emperor's finest. We really strive. The by our character, I just want to say that by our character in my mind, when you said perfect, I just imagined like Doctor Evil's like little finger to like the you know like. <laughs> That helps you. You go ahead and imagine a fucking ten foot tall Doctor Evil. Yes. Or whatever right. the number is in sensible measurements. Creed? I was just imagining the ten foot tall Doctor Evil. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. <clears throat> the Custodes turns to uh, Koya. I am perfect at what I am built for. I am not an Astartes, and I am not made to conquer worlds. There is no excuse for failure laxity or inefficiency. You have all the science, all the support, all of the training, all of the moral superiority you should need to be the very best amongst humanity. And yet, he gesticulates to the three pictures of assorted incidents. And yet, sir, we are still human. And also, should therefore... Scoff a bit at being called human. <laughs> should therefore, and his eyes icy blue, Sweep briefly over Coatlox. Be perfect. He turns to Mackie. Lieutenant Makilo Totek. 
Your force alone reported, as far as I can see, no crimes, no disgraces. Indeed, generally honourable con- uh, conduct throughout. Um, just in the back of my mind, I want to, like, well, I say, outwardly I'm going to roll my eyes. Um, but I don't know if that gets displayed, or, like the helmet eyes. Uh, you're not wearing a helmet, um, remember? Oh, that's right. I forget that part. I just do it anyway. Um, no, no crimes or disgraces, Mister. I'm going to ignore orders. Go down and turn fucking Zaragoth into a ruin with my grav gun squad. Yeah, that's the part that like is going on in the back of my mind, along with the rolling eyes. Just the images of him in my mind going around dropping buildings in the middle of a city. Yeah, because they were attacking buildings, not ripping civilians in half. Oh, I'm sorry. How many people buildings? were in How- them? Yeah. Yeah, probably quite a few, but also their orders were to go down there and to quote squad's no, official No, they, they weren't. weren't. <laughs> they were supposed to start south and flush people north whilst no, attacking No, they won't! Targets. Yeah, they were. No, Havoc were no, never meant to be won't. part of the drop pod. Oh yeah, that's very true. I just sort of I, egged I, him on to come do some slaughter. I, I, I've, got, I've, got, I've got justifications. I've got justifications. Well, and that's... Uh, <laughs> most war crimes have justifications. <laughs> yeah, that's also very true, actually. Anywho, let's hear your response here, Mackie. And uh, so, see uh, if, as you are aware, you did in fact disobey orders. Indeed. So I uh, turned towards, uh, towards the, the very large and intimidating, probably not a space marine, not space marine, you know that. Yeah, okay, not space marine. And I, I, uh, I begin talking. So, originally, I was pegged by, uh, by Lieutenant. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Shut up. God <laughs> damn it, Carl. <laughs> I'm so mad at you. All right, go, Ollie, go. I was, I, you know what I'm going to say? I was pegged by, the, by Lieutenant Coyer to go down on, uh, and infiltrate we the refugees that were flushed out of the city. Uh, follow them and infiltrate the Moro from Metoplexic. However, there was a miscommunication in the understanding of my abilities. I am not, by any means, a subtle man, nor am I a person who is particularly good at or interested in the uh, art of subterfuge. So I took the executive decision as it is entirely within my rem- remit to belay those orders and choose my own path, seeing as we are both of equal standing in the Legion. And I decided I would instead go down and uh, help the Zaragot squad with their flushing out. Now, it does appear that we did land further away than we intended, and instead of being able to flush out refugees northwards, we landed in the sensor. I instructed my squad, of my, my Havoc squad, to start sowing chaos around. <laughs> start dropping buildings. The custodian's face start... goes utterly stoic. It actually seems to stop <laughs> moving. Bit of a weird response, but you carry on regardless. Yeah, it happens. Um, and I, uh, uh, yeah, and, um, to direct to flush out as many people as possible and continue with the evacuation of Zaragoth, though the evacuation did not go as planned. It was at this point I later learnt of um, that we did we did uh, level some buildings, but we weren't there for very long before uh, we were commanded to infiltrate the uh, the Gralock range, find orbital uh, anti orbitals uh, that were rumoured to exist around there. Brother Lieutenant, if I might interrupt you for a moment, you uh, you say that you made the executive decision to join the assault on Zaragoth, countermanding the orders provided by Brother Koya, but as I understand it, the order of battle was merely drafted by Brother Koya. It was validated and enforced by Captain Carpy, your direct superior. My response to that is you wouldn't put a square egg in a round hole, and my talents and my squad's talents were far better placed in and around Zaragot, protect, sorry, uh, in and around Zaragot, either helping with the evacuation or destroying whatever fortifications we came across. So you admit it, you uh, disobeyed orders at the last moment? I will say that those orders did not appear to be coming from the, uh, from, from command, as far as I'm aware they were, they were Lieutenant Coy's orders. No, they definitely were passed on to you by command. 
I really actually genuinely do not remember that. I remember them being... I remember Benji coming up with them. You were, I think you were having a bad session for, like, non saltily and non sassily. I think you were having a bad session for attention at the time, but they, they were 100% passed on by command. Okay. Um, and you sense. were alerted to this several times, but again, you, you were having a bit of a day. Yes, I remember now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, so. Um, yeah, I, I say that um, my skills and uh, the people's knowledge of my skills was misplaced. Mm. I would have done more harm than good going down and helping uh, and infiltrating the fleeing refugees. Do you feel this was a running theme with Captain Carpy's orders and execution? I would say it's not... Uh, wait, what was it? I would say that's not an unfair view to take. There was a misunderstanding of our abilities and our knowledges. And how we could be best applied. I felt like we were not best applied in the areas we could have been applied in. Uh, for example, turns to um, Cusco, how, asking the apothecary to rein in a group of uh, the more brutal machine, uh, marines. Interesting. We, and we had no control over. A final note that I would like considered. Various reports I have received from Koya, admittance just now, and from Captain Carpy himself, indicate that at one time or another, all of you disobeyed orders and actively cut comms with command, even, in order to uh, be able to operate as you saw fit, rather than as the order of battle dictated. So, if possible, could you clarify when it was that uh, I actively performed such an action? Certainly. Uh, yours, uh, at least according to the report I received from Captain Carpy, was in the late stages of the assault on Zalona, when you actively cut off communications with the Obsidian Heart. I was unaware this was the case. From my perspective, it was as if a jamming signal had been issued, thus causing havoc with our communication system and potential audio, audio assault. I'll let you roll it, Carl, but I'm going to make it a little bit difficult. I will take Deceive of a Fellowship at a minus 20. Oh, great. I'm rolling at uh, 10 or under, then. But if you get it, you get it. There were storms in the area, so it's not inconceivable. The storms are just cleared at that point, and there's an immense amount of telemetry showing this happen. Army Mm. wants to fate it just for the lols. Like... I'll leave it up to you. It's already four off, so uh, short of 100, it can't actually get worse. Do you remember what happened the last time I fated a roll? (laughs) Hey, it's only two off now. (laughs) <laughs> You're going to get killed slightly less. Captain Carpy raises an eyebrow. The storms had recently cleared, and as far as the telemetry from both the Obsidian Heart and several other ships show, as well as uh, numerous Battle Brothers post-combat logs, including, for the record, your own, there was, as far as I can see, no jamming present. And at least some Imperial Army troopers attest to having been forced by their Astartes leaders to cease communications with the Obsidian Heart. I'm going to uh, uh, pipe up at this point. I do not remember any such time where I cut off communication with command. I may have not uh, followed all orders, but I have never cut off communication, as far as I'm aware. You maintain that your lack of communication in Fort St. Stannis, an area which had no intel indicating that this would be an issue, and which now seems to have no issues on that front, uh, was simply a result of this relatively unattested tech monster you found in the dungeons? Unequivocally. If you check the comms logs, you will see that there was ability we were trying to reach. You would see that I actually did attempt to reach the Obsidian Heart whilst inside. But unfortunately, I was unable to break through. If you check the comms logs and the various picked feeds, you will see that we attempted communication between the squad as well and were unable to. The entirety of the data from your suit, as well as the suits of all those accompanying you, seems to have been utterly corrupted. Occam's razor would then suggest that whatever corrupted our suit's data interfered with our ability to get communications out, rather than us taking a systemic, squad-wide ability <clears throat> to dismantle our suits, get the data, corrupt it, and put it back in without your tech priest detecting so. A convenient excuse. 
when the rest of your squad succumb to this temptation. A little voice at the back of your head pipes up, Mackie. He impugns your honour. You're better than this. I um, I take a, I take a sort of a, a, a small breath inside. Sort of um, shit. Actually, that's something I was going to say. What was going to say? Fuck. No, it's gone. Never mind. You can just bite your tongue in frustration, if you like. I mean, I know it's the truth. Um, I actually, you know what? I I offer my uh, I offer myself up for. Um, do they have some sort of like like instead of mind wiping, they can tell how truthful you're being by using various chemicals and shit like that? Probably quite a few. I don't think anything you've got on the ship. You're not really geared up for it. No, worries. I mean, I'll, I'll offer. I, I'll say that I unequivocally offer myself up. To have my brain banned for truthfulness, if you so wish. In fact, the best two things that we they'd have for it would be the Mechanicum, who are <laughs> still slightly uneasy allies at this point, uh, and short of that, Kuzco, who himself stands accused of this crime <laughs> and is not a good neutral party. Yeah. Um. I also uh, encouraged the Tech Marines. Sorry, the the Tech Priests. To go down to Fort St. Stannis and recover what artifacts they could. Perhaps down there you may find the answers as to why our communications were so badly broken. Or you will find evidence, rather, as to why. Mechanicum has found nothing suspicious in the ruins of the castle so far, save for recordings of its unnatural collapse, which could very easily have been an earthquake induced by the orbital bombardment. Regardless, your story, though plausible, is not consistent with the stories of your compatriots. Coatl, Mox, and Koya, do you have anything to say about your disobeying of orders? Whilst I did cut off communications, it was largely in an attempt to go dark for the assault on Marotha, rather than, rather than in a concerted attempt to silence any communications between myself and the brother captain. Whilst I did move against orders, at this point the plan had fallen apart, and no orders were forthcoming from the Obsidian Heart, so I took direct and unilateral action to bring a swift end to the conflict and bring about compliance in the most orderly fashion. All four of you stand accused of deliberately disobeying orders in pursuit of your objectives. All four of you as soon as you began to disobey orders, immediately showed a drastic uptick in effectiveness, although he eyes Kuzco somewhat quizzically at that point. Even if the mutants... In my mind, were... I tried! <laughs> Even if the yeah, mutants were perhaps questionable. Uh, and on my part, I shall say, other than the initial error in deployment, my declining of orders was mainly due to new opportunity discovered in the metro line. <laughs> you weren't aware of prior to its discovery. My conclusion looking at the pattern of your behaviour is that all four of you were hamstrung by the orders you received from Captain Carpy, and accordingly that you disobeyed not out of a willfulness to ignore the order of battle and more out of a potential necessity simply in order to be able to minimise casualties in your own and he uh, purses his face and Disgust, handsome, chiselled features sliding into an uncomfortable mould. Regrettable ways. Would any of you disagree with my assessment? Not at all. Point, thanks. No, I would not. And uh, I think that just leaves Mackie on the stand. As what was it you said, Ollie? Your um, the two things meeting at the the battleground of your honesty. Are you willing to throw Captain Carpy under the bus when Weselin offers you an olive branch as the rest of your lieutenants and the com- uh, as the other lieutenant and the rest of the command squad likewise sell out the captain all around you? I mean, to be fair, the assessment does sound pretty spot on. Like, resources were misused. It doesn't sound untruthful. It's not exactly throwing someone under the bus. It's just truth. Okay. I will say in uh, in in the uh, captain's defence, though it doesn't matter in battle, I do think his heart was in the right place. The man wanted what was best for the squads. He just didn't necessarily know how to apply it. In, in the back civilized... of my mind, oh, sorry, I was just going to say in the back of my mind, something about the best laid intentions being the path to 
like whatever the Imperium's equivalent of Hell is at this point, like because they don't really do be stuff. Um, they yeah. I mean, well, that would counter as well, brother. That I mean, yeah, it is not the captain's job, and it never was the captain's job to look out for what was best for us. It's the captain's job to prosecute the Great Crusade. We all took our oaths to Starthes. We all knew what that meant. We're really quiet. One of us. We are sorry. very quiet. Yeah, sorry. It's not the captain's job to look out for what's best for us. It's the captain's job to prosecute the Great Crusade. We all took our oaths as Astartes, but obviously aside from Lord Wesleyan here. If we must die for compliance and for human unification, then we must die for it. It is not for him, it's not us, not for us to decide how and when that happens. We can only do with what we have, with what we have. The captain can try and protect us, but that is not his job, and it should not be his job. The Custodes leans back in his chair. Looking at this conflict, I see... I see legionnaires breaking rank. I see legionnaires breaking orders in the order of battle. I see abhorrent, barbaric behavior. And I see a victory secured more through people ignoring the chain of command than through people following it. If Captain Carpy's heart was in the right place and that preserved lives, or dignity, or honor, this, this I could understand. But, he taps a couple of times on the, the keyboard in front of him, and the image of the uh, human being torn apart by an Astartes, gleefully, beneath their helmet at least, gleefully pulling them in two as their guts and blood and gore and viscera rain down on the Astartes' helmet and upper torso. I'm just glad it's not a picture of me. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. I've just got some cold sweat forming on my back now as he didn't choose the picture of me popping some dude's head like a friggin' water balloon. You did that out of necessity and rationale. You did not, in anger, slaughter a bunch of civilians. You killed one guy quickly and cleanly in order to do a specific thing that was a pretty valid tactical maneuver. I did the same thing. He gave me shit for it. Didn't you skin a man alive? Yeah, you skin a man alive. Sorry, that okay. wasn't quickly or cleanly. You, flen- you had a man flens to death on live radio in front of numerous witnesses, a civilian for that matter, whereas Carl had a fairly civilized discussion with uh, a, an enemy officer and then executed him out of necessity. Like... I'm not saying that long term you probably didn't save casualties amongst the civilian populace, but it was not a civilized way to do it. And the, especially this early in the crusade, the emperor's not keen on his fucking Astartes flensing people live on the Vox. You killed Alan Titmarsh, you fucker. <laughs> I think we actually decided right, right. his name is Big George, but, um, Alan Titmarsh in my heart. <clears throat> the, yeah, the, the custodies has slightly lost his place. Um, <clears throat> yes, if, if people, if honor or civilians or, or anything had been preserved, perhaps I could have empathized, but this has been a brutal, in many ways reprehensible conflict, and I must find someone to hold accountable for its successes. Thank you. I have, I think, all that I need from the four of you. I will have Cap- uh, Captain Carpy's hearing shortly after. I have happier news, then. Though I disapprove, his eyes flick over Koya and Kuz- uh, Koya, Kuzco, Kuzco and uh, Coatlemox, especially. Heavily, some of your methods... You have, nevertheless, completed a comparatively speedy compliance. And for acts of valour, you are to be recognised duly. Okay, so OOC, slightly medal time. Can I uh, ask him a question before he starts giving the medals? Yeah, shoot. Interrupt uh, tempestuously? Tempestuously. Lord Wesleyan. I have heard stories that the Emperor has bestowed the Aquila upon individuals for singular daring courage and action. 
can you s- say that these rumours are true or not? Officially, of course, only yourself and the Emperor itself may bear the Aquila. But a man could always dream. Custodius raises an eyebrow. Considering your methods and willingness, I would not dream too fondly. A little voice in the back of your head bristles at that remark. At the sheer indignity of it. You saved lives and he's treating you with this level of disrespect? I was going to say, I was actually going to reply saying, fair, I hope to prove you wrong in the future. The voice simply simmers. Weak. The custodies brushes it off without so much as a single more thought. Oh, I see. Would anyone like to nominate themselves or someone else for the greatest kill of the campaign? Individual kill? You what was it? I maybe make a good argument for group, but it depends on on. I mean, I would say it's worth arguing. Uh, what was it? I, I oh sorry. Uh, you go agreed. You go agreed. I blew up that thing and then landed on a spaceship. Yeah, the, that was uh, pretty badass. Promethium tank, like as a single act, like. I was going to well, say, actually, because of... Because, as, as I recall, it's the act that technically brought Zaragot to uh, compliance. No, not Zaragot, the loner. Maybe Carl's... Uh, I'm done talking to you now. Cry. I, I appreciate it, but in terms of the actual kill itself? Like, I mean, how we... Uh, what was there wasn't there? anything... I can't think of anything particularly spectacular in this campaign, to be fair. There, there was something that someone brought up about a kill I did, but I can't remember for the life of me what it was. I can't remember if it was Fort St. Stannis or... Yeah, was was no, you killed the castle with a bolt pistol. That was nobody, it. Nobody, nobody saw it, and thus nobody's going to fucking believe you. Middling Nicholas saw it. Did he? Because he yeah. wasn't in the room at the time, was he? No, he wasn't. No, true, no he wasn't. wasn't. No, yeah. And the audio and the fucking the logs are corrupted. Yeah. You like can I say, also, well, I think, if you would prefer not to demean the medal, it's perfectly possible for. So we'll say it's. So it's basically a vote system. You can cast it in favor of. Oh, X person did Y thing. But it's also perfectly, I would say, possible for people to cast their vote for no one got a spectacular enough kill. If you'd prefer to keep it like reasonably uh, exclusive. I would have said Creed and the train, to be honest. Like, that was pretty spectacular. Effective? Not particularly. Spectacular? Definitely. <laughs> like, can we really say it was Creed killing the train, or did the train commit suicide on Creed? I mean, in, in either way, Creed is integral to the whole process, so, you know. Uh, oh, well, I did take out several people while literally unarmed. Oh, that's true. He did kill people while bouncing around like a terrible fucking... Okay, yeah, it's much better. It's much better to describe it. But yes, like Creed, the incredible bouncing dervish, I think probably does deserve at least a a vote. I I think I'm probably going to cast, and I'm going to give myself a vote. I'm going to cast my vote for for neutral. I I actually think you all talked me round with the initial discussions there. But I don't think anyone scored like. Uh, notably, we had some wacky kills, but I don't think we had a really like, whoa, how did you do that kill? You killed that gargant with your fist and winning smile. So we've got one vote for Creed's wacky, jumpy shenanigans, one vote for neutral. Anyone else? Like, if we're going on like the spectacularness, I, I would say by neutral. Two votes neutral. Uh, Creed and Ollie. What does a voting neutral bestow? Is nobody gets it. Yeah, nobody gets nobody that. Nobody gets that, okay. I mean, yeah, I think I'm going to vote neutral. I think I'm voting neutral. Okay, that's Yeah, I it. think the same. I, I think I'd like to save this spot for, like, epic one-on-one things or things like that. I think that's probably fair. Like, considering... I know we set a pretty high standard with you killed Venus, but as as the initial fucking reward, and it shouldn't always have to be that, but it should be like, oh, wow, you killed that fucking orc war boss. Holy shit. Um, or, or otherwise massively notable kills. Like, if you'd blown up the airport by taking out the relic Dark Age of Technology walker that was defending it, say, that that seems to me like a good reward for, uh, good reward for the medal. 
There was a relic Dark Age of Technology Walker defending. No, there, there wasn't, but if there had been, and he'd killed that with the, the fucking explosion thing, that would have been pretty cool. Should have been a relic Dark Age of Technology Walker. Maybe a future campaign. I'll add it. <laughs> People will go, hey, it's your ladder. <laughs> Steve Walker. <laughs> Walker. Steve Walker. Yeah, cool. Next up, crit damage. Did anyone take any critical damage this campaign? Oh, I what do you think? Do we even need to deliberate? Uh, so is it just one person? Yes, again, um, it's just one person. Okay. <laughs> oh, no, I, I, I thought um, when the ship landed, not the ship, sorry, the firebird blew apart the tent, I thought some of us got down pretty hurt. Maybe I'm thinking you, the last campaign. Yeah, I, maybe, but uh, if, if people don't remember, then they don't remember. Yeah, that's fine. I don't think so. Okay. No, it's fine, it's fine. In that case, that will be one award, one additional, in fact, award for valor to, uh, Coatlmox. It's a red heart over a field of white. Oh, I think you probably still have your last one. Oh, we're two. Yeah. Sorry? Oh, we're two. Oh, yeah, you get two medals. <laughs> so you got your last one as well. Uh, did anyone burn a fate this campaign? But two. <laughs> that will be two awards for meritorious valor. A deep red heart over a field of silver. So the trick is just keep nearly dying to get medals. Keep <laughs> nearly dying whilst also... I can oh, only wow. do it once more. <laughs> <laughs> and are those the medals you really want? They look like at some point Creed's armour is mostly just going to be like awards of valour. It's just... <laughs> and on, that. on that subject of burning fate, I'm going to open it up for similarly to how we did the... And I was going to kind of tie this to the greatest kill thing, but I, also, I almost want to decouple it, I think. Would anyone like to cast a vote for anyone they feel has done something or been so momentous or well-played in the campaign that they should receive an additional plus one fate threshold? As with the greatest kill thing, it's also valid to vote like no or neutral if you don't think anyone has, has succeeded. We'll do it in order, so I won't ask people in turn. Uh, Benji? I mean, Creed did many things this it's campaign. perfectly okay to vote neutral. If I'm hearing from your tone of voice, I think. I think it's probably Creed. Like, I think he's done enough to, uh, to earn it. Because he, he did some shit this campaign. Okay. Next up. Actually, you know what? It's a bit unfair, I guess. Force. I know I just forced Benji to do it, but it's a little bit unfair forcing people to, like, do this in turn. I feel like there's a little bit of confirmation bias. Would people like to, and Benji, feel free to change your vote as well, if people would like to spook me on Roll20 or Discord, whichever is easier for you, I guess, uh, their their votes in the next 30 seconds. Or, like, just interesting acts of incredibleness. It's if you feel someone did well, if they were so momentous and amazing that they, they, they have earned an extra plus one fate threshold. It's not an automatic, like, I'd like to keep this character in a campaign. It's if you feel they were, like, so key and awesome and inspiring or, or did something so fantastic and wonderful that they've earned this. And again, I will reiterate, it is perfectly fine to vote neutral. And also to, like, let people who play their character super riskily, Creed, die if they are going to do that. Okay, I'm missing a single vote. Oh. I'm guessing that vote is from Creed. <laughs> I'm one rock. Yeah. Damn it, that's stuck in my head. I need to listen to that song now. Uh, the last person to send in their vote, that was a little bit neutral. I'd need a, a firmer, like, a firmer result, please. Uh -oh. Okay. By a reasonably simple majority, Creed, I'm not giving you a medal for it, but you uh, you may add plus one to your fate threshold as... I'll be more careful with this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is a friendship fate. <laughs> as you've... Uh, You've done enough, you've been inspiring enough, you've been vital enough and lived up to, lived up to, and to be fair, advanced and helped to define the ideals of your legion enough that the rest of the players feel you've earned your fate. 
Thank you. Don't thank me, thank the people who voted for you. As you will note, I did not cast a vote. I feel in this instance it's probably fair if I only cast to, like, break ties. Ooh, and... So, sorry? No, nothing, nothing. Finally, a campaign medal. Service in the Galafas compliance. I think that's uh, got to have... Really, there's only one colour set it could possibly be, as Weselin almost sarcastically hands it over. It's a skin, uh, skin pink bands diagonal Ooh. to blood red. Weselin moves through each of you in turn. Handing over the medals, congratulating you, and uh, looking not necessarily upset, but not exactly comfortable with the praise he's effectively forced to deliver. What was the name of the planet again? Galafas. Galafas. Conquered it. Don't even remember what it's called. I bet you at the top of the screen. Oh, it's on the map. Was. Uh, I think you're th- you might be thinking of the videos, Benji. Uh, entirely possibly. So it says uh, Second Legion Saga Galafas Campaign at the top. Yeah, that's the one. It's, it's not actually the same map for the record because the uh, the title overlays where it should say Merot Desig, and I think it's too close to Toil as well. So I had to like go do a version of the map with Merot moved south and Toil nudged a little bit south as well. <laughs> and with that, your medals issued, and I suppose probably more for the post session. But if anyone has any medals they'd like to see added, because I'm aware it is a bit static at the moment, um, then do please give me a poke or mention it rather. Um, Weslin ha- ushers the four of you out of his office. Folks, what do? This will be a speedy time skip before you find out the fate of your captain. Uh it's just what we're doing in the meantime. Yeah. I'm taking a deep breath, and then I'm going to go to my Havoc squad, and I think, you know, actually, no, I'm going to chill with the command squad, and see what they're doing. I'll start planning for making my mini unofficial forge shrine in the tunnel somewhere. <laughs> it's going to be your own, okay. with blackjack and bra- as ch- uh, legion serfs. <laughs> Sorry, Benji? I was about to say, I was going uh, to start running training drills, so I could fix the uh, Legion's slight reliance on, uh, you know, skinning people, which mm. we might talk about. <laughs> murder squad. Not even murder squad, it's the murder. I'm, I'm, I, if everyone's fucking up, then I'm going to uh, go and talk to my my Havoc squad and try... Uh, I'm going to see if I can get data out of my suits. Let's see if we can get the data uncorrupted. It's completely fragged. Ah. But uh, you do spend a fair amount of time like looking into it, but it, it's it's it's, it's, it's a shame because scrapped. Sorry, because when I, when I was in the in 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 the castle when I was recording them and that was working, the recordings were working when I was in the castle. Do you remember I was using that to judge time and distance yeah. and stuff? But I guess when it blew up, it blew up the data. Sad face. Yeah, I mean you weren't really interacting with the spook castle at that point. You know? Also, a lot of weird things happen when you destroy machinery. Uh, it's fine. I, I know I killed a castle with a single bolt pistol. Single bolt gun. Bolt pistol shot. There we go. You shot a castle in the head. Yeah, I shot a castle in the head and I won. <laughs> I'm so mad that that's accurate. I really am. Why the fuck did I write that? I'm calm. <laughs> and Cusco. What about me? Uh, what are you doing for the next day or so? Oh, right. Um, I want to meditate. Like, That's fair, you're going to retire and do your battle yoga. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I would like it also um, broadcast on the like uh, bulletin, the Obsidian Heart. Like, I, I presume that we have either some kind of message board or like daily notifications or what have you. Yeah, that's uh, fine. You can, have a, of... a bulletin. you can have bulletin boards, why the fuck not? <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to be running uh, battle yoga. Uh, session. 
battle yoga with the Astartes. Holy fuck, you're going to be so popular with the fucking Imperial Army. Oh my god, people would really fucking love that. <laughs> Sorry, I'm fucking, I'm dying. Uh, <clears throat> and on a more somber note, the next day, all of you are informed via runner. Captain Carpy has been removed from command on charges of incompetence. He may be deported. Sometime. No, he may be deported to another fleet. Uh, he may join Michelko in the brig. Uh, or he may be allowed to continue on in an advisory role as a uh, senior member of the command squad. Weslin will be deciding in due time. In the meanwhile, this means that the command squads, who are not cleared of all charges, but ultimately you've allowed Carpy to take the fall for you. Albeit, to be fair, reluctantly rather than wholeheartedly. <clears throat> it, yes, in the meanwhile, this means that per Legion tradition, you must elect a new member. After which we might speedily deal with Michelka. So... We're going to have slightly weighted votes this time. I think it's pretty clear that we're going to have a weight of about 10 in the form of Havoc Squad for uh, and Tactical Squad for Koya and Maki, respectively. Which, with your uh, selves, brings you out. I should probably get a calculator out, shouldn't I? I know it's not super relevant, but I'm going to do it anyway. So that's 10 plus 10, plus 2 for yourselves. And then we need to remove the captain and remove Michel Co. Does Remedial Squad get to vote in the elections? I would say so. Fair, fair. We're not like California or other states where prisoners aren't allowed to vote. We have nothing else. Actually, I think California doesn't allow to vote. California can yet. Florida yeah. doesn't. Also, <laughs> you're not a state and they're not prisoners, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, I consider them the equivalent to minors, though. I, I mean, I, re I kind of consider them prisoners, you know, relegated Jesus. to living on the Firebirds. They don't live yeah. on the Firebird, they work uh, they, they, can't. I, they, they basically, they basically, death is never but a day away for them. Okay. Um, which leaves, what else have we got? Uh, so I think the standard bearer is going to abstain. So that brings us up to 25. Remedial squad, I will roll for randomly. I don't remember exactly how many people are in it, so we'll say that's about five people or so. It's five in the remedial squad, if I remember rightly. Yeah, I think you might be correct. But minus one because of... Um, uh, yeah, we're not counting Mishoko in that, but you assigned three honor guards to it, I think, at last check, and there were already two people in it. So it'd be six, including Michiko, but we've already excluded Michiko, which leaves us with 70 Marines <laughs> to be divvied up between Niz uh, between Nazim, between um, Coatlmox and Cusco. Good. <laughs> None of them can be captain, and then they'll die at the end of the next campaign. <laughs> <laughs> it's a poison chalice put away from us. Uh, I'd like to endorse Cusco. Well, we'll see how well that goes, uh, first off. So we've got 70 Marines between the two of you. I think you've both been competing for broadly the same votes. I will take... I'll just take a, a flat oppose... Well, my instinct is I would like to take a flat charm over Fellowship from each of you, but do either of you have a skill you'd prefer to use instead over Fellowship? Um, I wanted to go with Intelligence. It's going to have to be Fellowship, I'm afraid. Though if you have Peer Adeptus Astartes somehow, then that would count. Oh. Hey, why am I a doctor with bad bedside manner? <laughs> I'd like to use navigate politics. Oh, if only. I hate you so much, Ollie. <laughs> uh, I've got any alternatives on you. Carl? Yeah, no, I uh, got nothing. Okay, in that case, I'll take an opposed charm over fellowship from the two of you, please. Offs. Uh, one. Two. Cool. So I guess that's a two to ro uh, two to one ratio. Then in that case, in favour of Creed, uh, seventy divided up two to one is 
my brain. 55? So... Yeah, it's going to be 30, right? So that'll be 20 plus 3.3. So 20 plus 3, um, which would give you 46 on one side. So 46 votes under Creed's control. Uh, oh, hang about, where's my fucking mouse gone? Oh, it's not actually 70. I'm going to subtract two of you, so 68. Damn. I, uh, I really should have argued for a buff because <coughs> reasons. Yeah, Creed also, because Creed actively participated in the horrifying bloodshed and didn't even try to restrain them slightly. In fact, he encouraged them <coughs> and disobeyed orders to get them to do it. So I feel like you argued your way up to Creed's level. That's why I let you both have it at a plus zero against each other. No. Okay. Um, but yeah, so that'd be, what was that? 46 for Creed and 23 for you. Okay, so, and then the remedial squad. Ollie, can I get a d4, please? And I'll, whoever wins gets the remedial squad. So it's, unless anyone feels like they've been especially kind to the remedial squad, I don't think any of you have been. I was considering starting some scheming, but I never did. Fair. Three, in that case. Uh, Ollie, you get the remedial squad's votes. So, by my count, Benji has 10 votes on, uh, 11 votes on his side. Uh, Ollie has 16 votes on his side. Creed has 46 votes on his side. <laughs> right, I don't think collectively we're able to outvote Creed. Hang about, let me double check that. 11. So key, Creed is kingmaker right now. It is He's a little bit maker. disturbing if Creed just decides who wins. 11. Yeah. No, yeah, if you all vote for the same candidate, then you would outvote Creed. So, in that case, I will take Discord spoops, please. Everyone, tell me who you're sending your votes towards. You can nominate any member of the command crew apart from whatever character young Nicholas ends up playing. Unless anyone... And actually, let's set this down now. If anyone desperately doesn't want to be in command, that's totally valid and fine. We don't want to do this again when we force someone to play a role that they're not really that into. Now is the time to say. Oh, but I was going to make Carl be this. <laughs> yeah, and I'm about to say I desperately <laughs> veto like my participation. As candidate. Okay. Alright. I will in that case, that's entirely fair. Wait, so Creed, were you gonna vote for me as well? You yes. know he was. Oh, so, motherfuckers. so you can't <laughs> vote for Carl. Uh Kuzco has recused himself, he's completely ineligible. I guess the extra option I will give you is an unknown NPC is a wild card, if that's what you'd prefer. Which will probably mm-hmm. be someone not unlike <laughs> Carpy. I, I I'm not gonna lie. being dead at the end of the next campaign. <laughs> Okay. Burn through. I, I need to still vote. I need to still vote. If you'd like to change your vote in light of the anonymous thing, now would also be a fine time to do that. Uh, part of me really wants to see one, part of me really wants to see the other. You know what? I think it'll be fun. Okay. So, um, votes vote. in from everyone. Final 10 seconds if you want to change your votes. When they say, I think this will be really fun, you sort of go, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> You don't know what I was saying it'd be really fun about. <laughs> I can guess. <laughs> Tallying. Tallying. <laughs> oh no, it's looking pretty close so far. Okay. In last place is Mackie. In first place, with the rest of the votes, is Koya. Hmm. I'm not gonna lie. I straight up thought Creed was gonna vote for himself. And that I was the thought, decision that- I still thought everyone was just going to vote for the NPC that we could then bully. I also yeah. thought everyone was going to vote for the bullyable NPC, honestly. <laughs> See, I, I was thinking, like, the thing I was saying would be fun is, I was like, either I'm going to vote for myself, or... I just think it'd be interesting to see what a, a Creed command looks like. I mean, I guess the alternative would have been if I allowed you to elect any given NPC from amongst the Legion so far. So that would be other additional candidates would have been Middling Nicholas uh, <laughs> and uh, Hannibal Lecter, the standard bearer who doesn't speak. And that's happened <laughs> once and is his only character trait. <laughs> So I think, do we have any other? Do we have any other NPCs? Let me have a look at the Legion character sheet. Not Mishalka. 
Yeah, oh yeah, that's yeah, true. Mission you could also have voted for Michel Girl <laughs> in the total <laughs> turn yeah. of events. It actually turns out this is just us hit pardoning him for command. It would be fucking hilarious if you voted in Michel Co and then had the trial, whereupon he immediately pardons himself on all charges. <laughs> I don't in, think, I'm in pretty space, sure Weselin's conducting the trial, isn't he? He's the highest imperial authority here. In, in, uh, I think um, it's, a, it's an internal matter at the moment, uh, and the, the incompetence is considered to have happened under Captain Carpy's watch, and Captain Carpy is being punished by Weselin. So, in in in, yeah. uh, in Legion law, does taking a pardon mean admitting guilt? Because that's what it means in American law. Taking a presidential pardon, anyway. No. Uh, how do you mean in terms of taking a pardon? Uh, so, you can only be pardoned if you've done it. Yeah, basically, you basically, if you pardon, you're admitting to guilt. You're, you're, you're admitting that you did it, but you're, you're also pardoned for it. So you don't receive the crime. You can only you... be pardoned if you have committed a crime. Therefore, if you admit, if you take the pardon, you are admitting you committed the crime, even yeah. if you deny that you did the crime. So that is yeah. assuming a much more extant legal system than the Imperium currently has, at least as far as the Astartes are considered. Uh, you, you basically operate above and outside of any law, save your own and the, uh, okay. your own, the Emperor and the Custodes, which means, arguably, yes, it should mean admitting that you did a crime. In practice, unless the Custodes or the Emperor or your Legion Master consider that to be the case, it doesn't have to mean that, and you can say, yeah, no, we pardoned them, but also they didn't do the crime. And yes, that is a contradiction, but it's a contradiction you're allowed to make. Um, this is not a good thing, but this is like you're almost immune to the law because this is not a democracy. Yeah, no, it's not a democracy. It's an autocracy. You have an emperor and like gene enhanced super soldiers. <laughs> um, you're a militarist it's almost, autocracy. It's almost like this is going to all end in tears. Mm. Something about giving the fucking martial class complete carte blanche to do whatever the fuck they like somehow ends up going weirdly bad. I don't know. Who ever could have seen that coming? History. So, after a whirlwind election campaign, in which, surprisingly, a number of candidates throw their support behind Koya, <coughs> albeit somewhat anonymously, unless you'd like to publicise yourselves, I won't do it. Um, Koya, despite his incredible unpopularity with the rest of the company. Like, he's genuinely really not liked by the murder. Mostly for his, you know, opposition to the murder. Thing. Yeah, exactly. People, people fucking hate the fact that you oppose the murder, which is the majority of the company at this point. Um, but it is also admitted that, like, whoa, your captain just got censored by the custodies. This is pretty bad. Maybe you need like a little bit of a killjoy, a little bit of a wanker. So it's someone who everyone kind of hates. At least maybe we need some charge. goddamn professionalism. That's not what they said. They said they needed someone who they hate a little bit in charge. Yeah, no. There was like, a the way I convinced my dudes to vote for you was basically saying, like, look at what happens to the last guy, right? Maybe we can get it to happen to this guy as well. <laughs> oh, I stand corrected. Yeah, a distinct sub subsection of the murder apparently voted for Koya on the basis that, like, well. It's pretty clear that the captain's just going to get murked again where the next time we do this stuff may as well make sure it's that bastard from Tactical Squad. Snooty dicks. We'll see how that fucking works out for them. <clears throat> Ten years of extensive hypnotherapy to get all this fucking murder out of them for a start. Maybe if we just let them keep murdering they'll murder it out of their system. A few other that sounds things. like someone who needs some hypnotherapy. A few other things happen in the wake of the Galifas campaign. One notable uh, thing is the recalling of the uh, limited remembrances sent out so far. This is not a uh, solely Galifas centric thing, but your battlefront is far from the only one sending back more horrors of war than glories. And at this point, the morale is not uh, the morale loss is not something the Imperium can take, nor are the ugly truths something the Emperor particularly wishes known. The remembrancer is recalled, as are those in other fleets. Similarly, issues in the initial diplomatic process spur on the development of the Iterator program, indicating that diplomacy is very clearly not best handled by the martial classes. 
who are there to kill things. And even if they go, uh, even if things go particularly well, per the video on Gal- uh, from the Galifast negotiations, it only takes one hot-headed Astartes to result in a war that can cost hundreds of thousands or even millions of lives. Whether that be in the short or the long term. I don't think you actually killed hundreds of thousands of people this campaign, but you did uh, probably cause a lot of damage in terms of like the orbital bombardment you did to the main continent, and they're going to have a lot of forest fires raging for quite a while, plus the environmental damage, especially toxic sludge rain in the agricultural center of Telefulis Desig that supplies almost all of the planet with its food needed to live is, is going to cause issues drastic issues later on. <clears throat> and so a diplomatic corps, which was already being trained and readied, is, is rushed out to the fleets. In the future, you will have trained and supreme diplomats alongside you. Hello? Does anyone have any... I guess any final... Fi- oh, I suppose one more thing that we're forgetting, actually. I knew there was one thing left on my bloody list. The Trial of Michelco. The Remembrancer and Iterator stuff going on in the background, but what do you want to do with Michelco? A full trial in front of the entire company with Lord Weslin as a witness. Mm-hmm. Full evidence, including picked logs and everything else, will be presented. Captain Coyer, the buzz killer. First action is to immediately bring a trial of treason against Michel. Oh, actually, I st- I'm speaking for you. What charges are you leveling against Michel? I believe they were outlined the first time we wanted to trial him. Yeah, I can't quite like remember what. Our- six weeks. Play all the things that uh, the custodians brought us up on. <laughs> yeah, basically uh, disobeying direct orders, bringing the uh, legion and thus the imperium and thus the emperor into disrepute and perfidy under a flag of truce. All very valid. Uh, what punishment are you pushing to administrate? I will give him a choice. When he is found guilty, because he definitely did it, I was there, <laughs> I saw him fucking do it, and we have the evidence. Mm-hmm. When he is found guilty, he will be given a choice. He can either remain on Galafas, where we will take his, we'll take one arm, he can remain on Galafas as a recruiter to win no glory, but he will serve the legion that he's shamed, or he can die here and now, in one quick, one quick go. What about extensive uh, experiments with hypnotherapy? Uh, that's always an option. I don't think it's super offered at the moment. You, you, the Astartes is supposed to be. Oh uh, yeah, no, that don't... was me just oh, being fair, crazy, uh, Doco. <laughs> if he does choose death, I will let you have the cords. What was the other option you gave me? He stays on Galifast as a recruiter, although I will take an arm to make sure he is weakened and stop him from taking over the world yeah, on his own. I, I did think you glossed over that a little bit, the point where you just casually remove one of his arms. But fair. Well, I, I need to keep him weakened, and in a, you know, so he doesn't just start an insurrection. There's no way an Astartes missing a single limb could possibly start an, ere- uh, start an erection. I mean, he's still got one out, right? Oh my and god. And the blood points. So fucking goddamn it, Ollie. But yes, oh. basically, I want to keep. He's He's been marked for shame. Obviously, like, he's in the start, he can get another arm. But it's a mark of shame. He's left here as a recruiter to serve the Legion. He's shamed. Okay. And thus, he may earn his honour back after a period of service. I will give you. Have a captain. Yeah. Is it a good idea to have a man who's meant to be the face of our of our Legion? Recruiting for us in such a way, I fear that may just lead to opportunity for him to insurrect and so discontent. Your brother Captain remains speechless, apparently. I'm, I'm not sure what you mean by this. Like, he, well, he, he's going to be the guy who's going to be recruiting people, right? So yeah, re- recruiting, recruiting and then they'll be sent through basic and they probably won't be assigned to any of our fleet. Like it'd, it'd be a fuck of a <laughs> fuck of an achievement to see the sleeper agent into killer as part no, of Michel Co's oh, revenge. Talking, I'm not talking about sleeper agents, I'm just talking about besmirching our good name. 
I would say that's probably a fairly legitimate fear, to be honest. Like, he doesn't have to get them in your fleet to go, yeah, and these guys are wankers, uh, and also, like, lie his ass off. Yeah, he's gonna have, like, zero responsibility, like, zero accountability, as far as I can tell. Might Shut I suggest guys a third on. option? Implement him into my company, and let him prove his glory on the front lines with me. <laughs> You're gonna induct him just back into the murder, the general operational squad. The murder, which we're going to stop utterly by <laughs> through this long years of training. You does this mean? Just let me take him under. Does this mean that because we're now in charge of companies, right? You're so we have in charge we, of a company. But we, we next campaign we become in charge of companies. Right? Uh, like, next, like hundred each. next campaign, you will be in charge of a grand company. You will be the command squad for such. And and so does that mean we have a hundred marines each? Or like that means you have each? a th- roughly the the grand company is actually very much more in this period, but broadly it means you'll have a thousand marines under your collective command. Under our collective command, okay. So that just means suddenly the murder squad is going to balloon in size. There will be no murder. There will be only cold, ruthless professionalism. I mean, organizations can be quite fluid uh, at this point, so they, they adapt according to the me- uh, the needs and personalities of the different legions. Like, fun fact for you, at least as far as I've been able to determine, the Lunar Wolves do not have grand companies. They have companies. And that's it. Um, it's a really weird structure. And the companies themselves have incredibly variable command structure. The smallest recorded are, like... Uh, it, it's either 5 or 50, I forget, but it's tiny. And the largest recorded is uh, in excess of 300. So they adapt incredibly fluidly to the circumstances they're given, even when they're incredibly in incredibly large formations. Um, which means there's nothing requiring you to keep your gra- uh, to keep your grand company in like 10 separate smaller companies. It could be, well, we've got the murder, the tactical company, the havoc company, the machine cult, uh, uh, the Apothecary Squad, and his Remedial Company. <laughs> it's almost like you're encouraging us to go full Dark Angels. It's not encouraging you to go anything. Hmm, specialist squads that are laid upon top of the Principia Bellicosa. I wonder where I've seen that before. I'm personally looking oh, almost every forward. legion, to be fair. Sorry, Sorry, a couple, I'm personally looking very forward to getting a couple of more gravity cannons, but some of them seismic charges as well, and a couple of demolitions experts. This is going to be great. I'm sure if they do, still has trial or if like yes, they sorry, just skipped got, over. Uh, full seven minutes. Cool. So I would you like to appoint a chief prosecutor, Benji? I would say this is probably going to be a charm of a fellowship role. You can also do the chief prosecution yourself. Uh, no, I'll appoint another. Uh, I shall appoint Brother Makilio Totek to be the chief prosecutor. Your I'm sorry, uh, what? Your lieutenant. Mm, okay. I'll, uh, I'm going to chiefly prosecute the shit out of this guy. Yeah, you're going to wholeheartedly go along with your new captain's orders? So uh, recently elevated. I have expressed my doubts as the efficiency... The eff- mm. eff- efficiency. He is, pro- eff- efficacy. He is efficacy. promoting such a, such a bad idea, isn't he? And it could I, be I've you, made it. you know. You were so close to the captaincy. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. This is, uh... It's all again. fine. It's fine. This is fine. Pri- privately, smell Mal- of Mal- burning in the background. Privately, Malkia Totep thinks we, every commander so far has been handed enough rope to hang themselves with. <laughs> and if this comes back to bite, uh, bite Queer in the, in the, in the arse, and it comes back to bite in the arse, so it doesn't, it yeah, doesn't. Yeah, no, that's probably fair. Like, I mean, what, what are the, what are the chances that, uh, Koya is gonna, like, Try and radically change the culture of the nascent legion in a way that critically offends people. It'll be fine. Um, yeah, I will go along with the chief prosecution. Okay, in that case, I will take charm of a fellowship at a plus forty. Charm of a fellowship, so I'm rolling at eighty or under. Get hundred. I'm going to spend the fate points. Oh god, hey. don't spend a fate point. Only think about think about the fun if you don't. Ah! <gasps> That's oh, one sake. doff. However, oh. the counterpart, as it was an opposed roll, I was actually going to also ask Ollie to roll for me. Uh, Ollie, I can, um, roll it. can you can you roll? Yeah, on behalf of um, uh, uh, on behalf of Michelco, it's going to be at a minus. I'm going to say a minus thirty. He's yep. also doing charm of the fellowship. He's rolling at uh, forty or under, I believe. 
14 or under, so minus 30, so 10 or under then. Yeah. Get one. <sighs> one degree of failure. No, two degrees of failure. No, one degree of failure. One degree of failure. failure. Actually, versus wasn't expecting a double one degree of failure on a plus forty versus a minus twenty. And we're uh, both we're both on forty, so it's a roll off, I think. That's entirely fair. Yeah, let's do let's do a roll off. Okay. Yeah, do you, you, you do the you do the roll off first. No, you know what, Ollie? Let's let's go at the same time. You ready? I've got my my key over the enter key. I'll, okay, I'll count us down. Oh, okay. okay, you count us down. We'll go on zero. Yeah. Okay. Three, two, one, zero. <laughs> That round that adds up to a hundred. I can't think how that's not more perfect. That is perfect, but to be fair, I rolled a d10 and you rolled a d100. Ah, fuck's sake. Okay, we'll roll again. Uh, I mean, oh, oh, roll. No, I'll, I'll roll again. I fucked it. <laughs> Against all odds, Mishlko's argued reasonable doubt. Enough of the jury of his peers, made up by largely of members of the disapproving murder, seems to agree that, yeah, you know, what are we supposed to do? Not fight? What a dishonourable and cowardly way to engage in conduct. I will say, Koya, you are the captain. If you would like to override his jury, even as they... I would like to hold a hand up to bring the talking to to a close. Although I was there to witness Michel Coe's crimes, and we have seen evidence of it, he has been found to have acted (laughs) justly and reasonably by by a company of us here assembled of the Legio 2. However, as we have seen, Brother Michelko is unsuited to the role that was apl- that was given to him as part of the Honor Guard. However, as the Principia Bellicosa updates and changes, I can think of no greater honour for Sir one of his talent than, be de- than to be named the Sergeant of our first Destroyer Squad. Brother Michelko shall be first into the breach. Whenever we need an enemy utterly annihilated. <laughs> Wait, the story is like magic, though. Michelko blanches. No, they're not quite actually. Uh, a okay. havoc squad is a heavy weapon squad. It's a fairly respectable gig. A destroyer squad is who you give. You know when you not blanche to. You want something dead. You don't care how it's dead. That's who you call in. They're given weapons that are traditionally quite lethal, or either to them or to others. Often both. Uh, they're given weapons that are usually considered dishonorable, often because they're effective, but barbaric. Um, and they're also thrown into the most high casualty environments possible. Permission to join the Destroyer Squad, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Permission to liaise with the Destroyer Squad as its resident tech adept, granted. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> Michelko looks equal parts surprised and horrified, relieved and yet, oh fuck! Does, does anyone he's... know what? Oh, sorry. sorry. Oh no, destroy. Say, does... Destroy squads do already know... exist. Are they do already exist. Then? Yeah, so you, you'd all be familiar with the connotations. This is very firmly a like kicked upstairs. It's actually fuck you, Benji, for knowing the law. It's actually reasonably smart. Like technically, it is a promotion, and even arguably a slightly like oh. How nice of you, promotion. You can't argue also a with it. Death sentence. But it's also, yeah, equal parts of death sentence and a fuck you. It's like appointing it's like appointing someone the baron of a town called bullshit. Yes, it's a promotion. No, it's not a compliment. Uh yeah, so here is this barony I'm granting you. True, we don't control it at the moment, so you're going to have to fight for it yourself. But you know, here's the title. <laughs> Deal with it. Also, there's no one else in the Destroyer Squad at the moment, and you don't actually even have any Destroyer Squad equipment, which means he's just a guy with all of the negative stuff, but he also can't oh, do we, his job yet. We, get, we will, fo- yeah, we will form back. it around him, but... No, exactly. <laughs> I've been keeping that one up my sleeve for a while. Ah, you clever little bastard. Okay. And I think that's a that's a good spot to uh, to close it off for the evening. Does anyone have any final notes they'd like made for the the Galifas campaign here? Are we doing a time skip, or is that just already happened? Uh, I mean, that already happened. That already happened. I mean, there was a little time skip post the campaign, but there'll be a, a more formal time skip between this and the the next uh, the next okay. campaign. Though, for the record, also, uh, so I've got holiday week after next. And I'll be gone for a couple of weeks, so we'll have a bit of a gap. But um, I'm still here next week, so we'll do like a bottle episode next week. Again, if you all have any ideas for shit you would like to spend the time doing, like a little one-off character building thing, next week could be the time. 
Um, I'm I'm open to I'm open to ideas and suggestions. I got some plans. I mean, bring them up, man. What are you, what are you thinking? Oh, it was you know, Krieg was talking about operating like warrior lodges and speciality stuff like that. He was bringing that sort of stuff in, trying to temper the bloodlust out of the Legion by being like, yes, you can kill everything, but what if you only killed the best things? <laughs> Okay. For the record, I would why, rip, why rip people in half? Just random nukes in half when you could find the enemy officer and challenge them to a duel and then rip their head off. Interesting. I like it. Trying to conduct the lightning. Creed? Oh, I say, I kind of want to make a lodge unbeknown to the rest of the command squad. Hmm. Where I sort of attract people as, ah, oh, there's no proper commanders here. We're all equal here. Put on your funny hood. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm on the I... command squad, but the rest don't know about it. But, but... I want to be a part of it. Make your own as well. well yeah. Let's all just secretly make lodges for well, that. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I was going to say was the most obvious lodge situation at the moment is the host system in the Dark Angels, which is just a series of interconnected councils who don't talk to each other, who all do different things. And I've been outside the Principia Bellicosa. Do they have the hosts yet? Yeah, they have the hosts. They don't have the Hexagamaton. Yeah, oh, okay, different. yeah, that's what but I they have saying. the hosts. I think I was getting the two confused. You're right, they're not the same. Sorry, carry on. Um, cool, I, okay. I also, I, I like... Oops, sorry, Ollie, just a second. I would, I would also like to note that I, I appreciate, Benji, that you're trying to... Your, your method for changing the Legion culture is to channel it rather than try and erase it. I think that's a really neat thing to, to work on. Sorry, Ollie, what are you going to say? I was going to say uh, an idea I'd like to have is to get more interesting destructive weapons for the for the Havoc Squad that is now going to be ballooning in size and thus need weaponry and equipment appropriate for them. Oh yeah, you'll you'll get a company. Um, I also think like if people we will probably change these around a little bit at some point, but if you all would prefer to rename things rather than like squad and company, then we can we can also shift around with that. I still really like the division of. Um, Havoc, tactical, command, remedial, and murder. Um, there's, <laughs> there's something about it that really appeals to me. Even if there's definitely still room for, like, reformatting what it is the murder does. Oh, I love my Havoc squad. Gives me the warm fuzzies and the tremblies at the same time. As well. Like, I, I thoroughly suspect some of our Legion brothers will be lost to the bloodlust and be unable to really function as line marines again. Which is entirely in keeping with, I'll just stick them in the destroyer squad. That way they can do all of the horrible murder that they love. But equally, it will be at a time where I choose to unleash them. I mean, I'm here for when you inevitably lose the captaincy to Michelco next round. <laughs> all he's got to do is survive Destroyer Squad. How hard can it be? Right? Right? Mm. <laughs> As the captain goes, hmm, mighty fine fortress the opponent has. But this is where we... Oh, sorry, Carl. I was just going to say, this is where we end up putting him through like the toughest, most grueling training regime, where he somehow comes out as like a super tank due to all of the experiences he's had. I think it'll be a lot of fun watching you all brutally try to arrange for Michel Co to be destroyed. Maybe he will die. I'm not going to deliberately keep him alive, but I'm also tickled by the idea of this long-running, bitter rivalry. Yeah. Thank you, Dad. Check Cool, okay. Let's see how many reminders they want noted down for next uh, next session and or campaign. Um, battle yoga classes are underway. Yes. Lodge implement up, make the, a forward uh, throw. Yeah, Sorry. implement the lodges slash hosts slash murder clubs. Right. Uh, I just got to say that for my battle yoga classes, I'm imagining the like 30k equivalent of spin class with the little the big bouncy balls as well, right? Yeah, oh God, right, and can, like the energetic think, music. Sorry. All I can think of now, if, God, have you seen those uh, Peloton adverts on YouTube stuff? <laughs> Don't no. quit on me now, Battle Brothers. <coughs> I have not, I'm afraid. Uh, uh, any other just... reminders for next session? Uh, can I get myself a fancy cake? I think it's entirely fair to have that. Like, you can just add that to your description. That totally comes with the captaincy. Um, also, can we just get command squad capes? Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> you sure. If you want to make about, capes part of the uniform, you can. How about command squad Jaguar skins? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, that's also entirely fair. All right, yeah, sure. Everyone add yourself a command squad jag, uh, Jaguar skin. 
I should have a space name. Also. Space Jaguar. Space Jaguar. Spagua. Spagua. <laughs> Spagua. Spagua is weird. It sounds either like really politically incorrect or like spaghetti, and I don't know which one I dislike more. Yeah, like the Italian in me is just like, no, no don't, don't fucking do that. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say as well, considering we have concrete thing as well, that Koya has long, luscious, beautiful hair, I'm going to have my uh, campaign medals weaved into it. So to display them Aww. as I walk. Do you know what you're thing in a lecture or whatever is right where she like whips her hair around and knocks people out with like her ponytail? Do you know what? Be you... fair though, she puts a weight in it, like a knife in it. Sorry. Do you know what y'all can have instead of a jaguar, which is a setting cat, and also would be a pretty fucking pimping thing to have in your bloody uniform? A Grinx pelt. Yeah, I'll we think like... a Grinx gar- pelt. So, can you guys remember, like, old pub pets? Like, you get the pub dog or yeah. the pub cat. Can we have, like, a bridge cat? A bridge... Uh, uh, I well, think you bridge, even bridge. did have a bridge cat, if I recall correctly. I'm pretty sure there was some mention made of it. It was in Season 1. I need to re-listen to it to figure out what they were called, but I'm pretty sure we had a bridge cat. Okay. So otherwise, no one's been feeding that thing. I, you can assume the menials are feeding it. You know what I mean, what though, right? The menials right? are for. It's true. So, it, we, so we have an elder are not going to like us when they see no. these belt capes. No, they don't like us anyway. Yeah, but we're meant to be the, the di- we're meant to be very diplomatic towards them. At least the, el- the elder have so a view of back in charge, yeah. Ollie. Uh, the, the elder have a view of us a bit like how you would feel if a gorilla broke into your house and started waving around a shotgun. Oh, I'm fully fully aware of how they feel about us. Yeah, we'd be terrified and amazed at the same time. Yeah. Like, a gorilla with a shotgun? Fuck, but at the same time, I could die very badly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like, they think of humans as primitive monkeys, but equally, you'd be, ter- you'd be shit terrified if a giant fucking ape broke into your house and started waving around heavy weaponry. I really what I'm hearing here is that the Elder actually have an inferiority complex when it comes to humans, they just don't want to admit it. They I mean, yeah, kind of. Yeah. At least some of them. And, and they're also, in uh, most of them, generally in denial about that. Whilst also being deeply envious of it, uh, I mean they're just so, like atypical fantasy elves, just like copied over. I know I like the unrelenting grimness of their grapple with death that I feel a lot of fantasy elves don't really like. A lot of fantasy elves kind of fan wank about dying spiritually, whereas the yeah. elves have the very real threat of no, no. Each and every one of us is going to the worst conceivable hell, and there is no way around this without exploiting they're, reality they're, in the worst Yeah, they're place. cultural fanatophobes for a very good reason. Yeah, they, like, <laughs> do all their souls get trapped in the... Well, the ones who live on the cities, don't they get trapped in like, the Infinity Matrix, whatever it's called? Yes, they get trapped in soul stones yeah. when they die, which are placed in the Infinity Matrix, and there's a very good reason for that. Because yeah, something getting eaten, right? Yeah, but also, also remember that that's not like immensely proof. If someone destroys the soul stone when it's in the network, or like blows up the craft world or something, that's it. You're screwed. You go straight to Slanesh. And though Warhammer Fantasy has come back with a like, oh no, it's fine. The Eldar souls were all just like stuck down in Slanesh's gullet, and you can totally get them back. Forty K doesn't have that yet, uh, which means no, you just get your soul torn apart. Semi forever like, by Slanesh. Like even even Iniad can't save you if you've been grabbed by Slanesh. Yeah. Like he has to get to you before Slanesh so, gets to you. So far, at least, like I say, Warhammer Fantasy did walk back on it. So like maybe it'll get. I know it's a popular fan fiction thing as well. So maybe it'll get walked back. But but yeah. So I think you're you're right, Carl. They are they are just you know your standard fantasy elves. But certainly for me, there's something much more appealing about the tragedy and dickery of the Eldar than usual with fancy elves. I I like them a lot more than I like, say, like high elves and dark elves in Warhammer Fantasy or uh, Tolkien's elves, for instance. Um, anyway, I'm all, all a bit all a bit irrelevant, I suppose. So yeah, you you get com- feel free to add these to your fucking descriptions. You get command uh, Grinks pelts and a fancy cape. Yes, and fancy capes for everyone. I want, like, a laurel wreath, like, woven into one of mine. Not really how you wear a wreath for the record, but sure, it's your character description, you wear what you like. Um, like, uh, I'm trying, I'll, I'll get a picture of it, but you know, basically, like, the way that the wreaths are woven, woven onto, like, the shoulder capes. Yes. What, around the collar? Yeah. Actually, that's a point, can I commission shoulder capes for all of us, for casual and formal wear? I uh, sure. It's I mean it, it's it's character description stuff, so you're perfectly perfectly well able to get this stuff sorted. 
Um, in, do feel free to define yourself uh, casual wear slash formal wear, like non-armor things as well. Because um, to be fair, I've been just been going with a fancy robe at this point. Yeah, like I think that. that's pretty general. But if you also want to have like, I don't know. Tight red vest with the cog mechanicum on the center. That's, that's... And some speedos, also red. Oh, gosh. All right, let's rescind this immediately from Creed. But if everyone and anyone else would like to define their fucking... Oh, speedos, Jesus Christ. And uh, you've just got, like, friggin' chunky boats as well to go with them. Any other reminders for next session? Slash campaign. I suppose uh, oh, um... Figure out how good my new bionics are. Haha. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, we should uh-huh. probably do that. Definitely. Uh-huh. We're getting Mickey over there. Mecha Mickey. Haha. Uh-huh. Let's give it a war cry. Oh, God. Jesus. Oh, have myself, have myself get a new set of armor. Oh, you can assume that happens. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, a nice set of armor. Oh, okay. Koi wants to try and get this. Uh, Koi wants else? the good stuff. Yeah, will there be potential for a Terminator next campaign? Mm. Yeah, I would say you can have your Terminators next campaign. Why the fuck not? Fuck yeah. Dual mounted earthquake cannons. What, the basilisk things? Wait, what? That's a thing? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, it's Are just. The earth shakers, not earthquake uh, cannons. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah. Same, same shit. Uh, but no, you can't mount a basilisk's main gun on a Terminator. And what if we had several? Generally, Terminators have at least one hand available. You don't strictly need it, but it's just for, like, practicality's sakes. So you don't come to a door and then have to force your way through the door by charging it. What's better, what? by the way? Cent- Centurion armor or Terminator armor? In we terms don't have of- Centurion yeah, armor. Centurion armor is not around. They don't exist yet. Okay. No. Um, it depends what you mean by better. They're different. <laughs> More armor. I guess, uh, yeah, more armor, I suppose. <laughs> more tanky. Which one's tankier? I Because uh, one you I, wear... One's, only... got two, one's got a two-up save, one's got toughness five. They're tankier in different ways. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, um, Terminator armor, probably, because Terminator armor comes with an inbuilt force field, whereas Centurion armor doesn't. So, uh, okay. Terminator armor. So, any other reminders for next session? Uh, I think so. I have some more sort of questions for the in between campaign. Uh, like, fair. I mean, we can do. Uh, we can sort that stuff next session as well. We'll probably have like, yeah, a little yeah. bit of like in between campaign stuff sorted, and then we'll do like a little bit of. I uh, probably not too much in depth role playing, but like a little bit of like rolling around. Like, oh, how do you set up this or that thing? And we'll we'll let we'll let people set up their plot hooks basically and, and do their development stuff. Uh, well, um, h- how many weeks are you off on holiday for you? And are you coming over to the UK, or are you, are you going out in Sweden? Uh, coming over to the UK. Um, let's see. I'll be so, trapped here in the godless waste. Uh, yeah, I paid for test to release, so hopefully I'll be out in five days, and then we can spend a week getting shit faced on good cider that I physically need. Um, yep. So I will be out for technically two weeks, and I, then I'm back on the third. But I'm getting back on a Tuesday and quite late in the day, so I don't think I'll be back in time. So probably I'll be out for out of it for about three weeks. I'm afraid. Mm-hmm. No worries. Uh, after after next week, if you all want to like have a little three week mini thing whilst I'm gone, that's totally fine. I'll have my portable PC with me. Holy oh, fuck, I love having that phrase now. Um, but my internet connection is not likely to be good, so I don't think I'll be in a good situation for like being able to. Well, it sounds like you'll be shit faced most of Tuesdays. I, no, if nothing else, I can't go to the cider brewery until after the first week's done. Uh, it's also only going to on Fridays. <laughs> cool. Feedback. Anything you liked, anything you disliked, anything you want to see more of or less of next time. For the session or the campaign? Uh, either or. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan of how the Legion turned into a gang of kill crazy murderers. But very little prompting. But other than that, it was good. Yeah, I think yeah. a part of that is, is certainly my, like, inbuilt world eater biases. Um, plus, think, we might, ooh, sorry. As I was gonna say, like, overall, I think the campaign was fun. The sessions were fun. Uh, I would, you already know, like, my, uh, my thoughts on, on the, on the railroad and that happened in the Defiance Aeroplex, where the, you know, what's his face? What, the gun and just shot the, the guy for, for no reason. And like, so I'd say next time, if you do see a consequence, an action you don't see happening, 
maybe just like keep an eye out for it anyway, just so we don't get like railroaded into to, in like a, an NPC does a thing yeah. that all of us logically didn't expect. I to think happen. I I made a. I should have brought the space walls in to be the fuck up. Really, would have been the better thing to do, and it would have even helped with like introducing the bloodlust a little bit more. In retrospect, I wish I'd gone with that, which was my plan B instead of my plan A for things going drastically wrong. Um, um, I mean, like one of the other things that like, would have been a potential. Like, I appreciate that all of this is in hindsight. Yeah, it is like because yeah. we were going quite well in person there, sort of thing, and just because like the de- diplomat dealing with us was getting on with us doesn't necessarily mean like the higher ups back home would have. So we could have been like, oh yeah, this is going great, this is going great. You go home and tell your friends that mm-hmm. like you're with us now, and then like they kind of secretly attack us because they're like, what? Why did you say we're with them? Sort of thing, you know? Yeah, but I, I, so from my point of view, I equal parts wanted to represent the people on the world as reasonable and also felt like that would be invalidating you. And ultimately then invalidated you in a different way anyway. Yeah. It, a part of it was me trying to avoid, trying to avoid invalidating you and then managing to invalidate you anyway. As you say, like hindsight 2020 and all that. <laughs> Uh, there are definitely better ways to approach it. Um, there, it was also, I, I guess I'll reiterate, a weird confluence of events. Um, oh, got us confluence. There. Uh, sorry. Uh, yes, big confluence feels. Um, yes, but, uh, but the feedback is, the feedback is noted and, and, uh, important. Thank you. Uh, any other, any other notes? Uh, apart from that, like, we did have, I mean, I thought it was a very fun campaign. It was a good sessions and enjoyable. Yeah, I quite enjoyed the otherwise freeform activity and like uh, the way that basically it was, uh, I say, more sandboxy, but still with a defined order. Like, you know mm. what I'm saying? Yeah, this was uh, at least for me. I don't think we had you in Rogue Trader much, Carl, but this this was very much a return like to games. A return to no, it's quite fine. A return to an, uh, an improvement over a lot of the things that we did in Rogue Trader. Um, and I, I really, uh, with like a heavy dose of apostate marches. Um, right. I li- will need to be right back two minutes. That's entirely fair. Pop the puppy out. Liberally. I will be back. Liberally salted in there. Um, but it, it's, it was really fun getting to try both of those styles again, like apostate marches style gameplay, but in a, in a rogue tradery format. We've got something a little bit different prep for the next one. So it'll be in a subsector rather than across a single planet. And be more like freeform void travel. Um, I've got to admit, like uh, not really being in Rogue Trader, hearing things like oh, you, you had a side story with tigers in the vents, like what's going on here, sort of thing, yeah. like that, sort of like not necessarily like that's what I'm getting at, but you know that like style of well, this is out of the box. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean there were so many fucking tigers in the vents on Rogue Trader. To the, I love those tigers so much to the extent that when they got a new ship, I went to great lengths. To convince, I forget if I convinced people or if I like fiated the tigers into the the new ship's vents as well, but they were good tigers. They went over to the um, they they did went over to the to the other vent to the other ship. If I remember rightly, I wasn't yeah, in no, the they, campaign. They, but I remember you saying like when they when they docked to like change over or something. Oh, that might have been it. I love those fucking tigers so much. They were such a fundamental part of the character of the campaign. Characters came and went. Tigers live forever. They're a great characteristic of our ships. They were, especially because like every time you got boarded, people would go, "Ha ha!" To the vents. No one will ever. Holy fuck! It's a tiger. <laughs> and I think the one time we had a character crawl inside a vent, they immediately found a tiger hunched up in there, <laughs> just staring at them, both confused <laughs> at what the other one was doing. <laughs> Is you have an understanding. Movie? This is our territory. No, they did not have another st- Oh, yeah, because it was Creed, and they then had to pull, like, half of Creed out of the vent, and the <laughs> other half now was the Tiger's Creed. <laughs> right, it just makes me think of, um, you know, in horror movies, where they go into a dark place with a lighter or a zippo, and they keep, like, trying to light it, and then it does, and you just see, like, that giant yeah. face behind them before it gets blown out again. I think that's what happened. He toggled on his light. And then there was a tiger immediately in front of him in the very small cramped vent. <laughs> oh man, I love those fucking tigers. Anywho, any other feedback? Right, I've returned. Sorry. Uh, talking so, about uh, tigers, actually, funny enough, made me wonder about like I'm gonna say an animal division, like 
You, you can have cavalry. Sweet. Tiger cavalry. I mean, we've clearly established that those tigers, the vent tigers, exist in this setting. If you want to introduce vent tigers onto the Obsidian Heart, I'm okay with it. No, I'm using the vents. <laughs> <laughs> the vent tigers appear to have caught and killed the tech marine, as well as various other weirdly unrelated people. We now right. have the tiger equivalent of forge rats. <laughs> this is not yeah. what we expected to happen. Oh, man, like, that would be amazing, yes. I mean, we're getting a little off tro- uh, to- uh, topic, but yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll, really I'll try and include a sting at some point next campaign, Carl, where I will give you a chance to get your tiger cavalry. Any any other feedback? Oh, sorry. No? Cool. In that case, questions. Anything anyone was narratively unsure of in that session, or indeed this campaign? Is everyone following the plot? Or was, I suppose? I think so. Um, I'm sorry. No, nope, I didn't say anything. Um, yeah, so with the way that, like, um, basically our uh, after-campaign report is always going to effectively be... Um, uh, I'm trying to think of a debrief with the custodies. Uh, not always, but certainly for a little while at least. Probably next campaign you'll have Wesel in as well, I would expect. Um, not so sure about the one after that. It'll it'll vary a little bit contextually depending on what happens in the campaign. It depends, it depends really about who's around, where we are, and how high up we are. Because if we're not that high up, we'll probably just get debriefed by the highest ranking of highest ranking Imperial on the fleet, which is probably going to be a custodian. So if we're high up enough, we'll talk to the Legion Master or and or the higher the Praetors up above. And with the Primarch, and when the uh, if they're around, and if the Primarch turns up and we're high up enough, we'll probably talk to him. So, uh, so yeah, it'll it'll if, it'll if he gives this. if he gives a shit. It's a big if. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, it'll 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 vary a bit, basically. Any other questions? I think we covered like the post effects of what's going to happen to everyone on this planet. Uh, does anyone have any questions about anything on the planet you feel like you missed? Or would like clarification on? Because we're unlikely to come back here short of what, the Horus Heresy, was, like five. What was on Arag Desig? Uh, yeah, what's up with the anomalous structures? Oh, yeah, they were going to be like demonic y stuff. Um. Uh, and you never quite went there, so we didn't get to do any demony things. I had some I ne- ordinance preps. I nearly kept went talking there about it. Yeah, I- it was a toy cost for you, I thought. Yeah, I wanted to go there, but never really found. Yeah, I never got the opportunity. I was honestly expecting Benji to go on the basis of like the Tethic facilities being a prison camp, and I thought he was going to probably do some bullshit with uh, starting a prison riot and rallying people. Um... But yeah, we would have had some trippy dippy stuff if you'd uh, gone over to Arak Desig. I didn't, Arak, hear Arak. I, I didn't hear anything you just said, I'm afraid. My it was all demons. It was all demons, and we didn't go. Okay, and Port St. Stannis, was that demons or tech heresy or xenos? My um, assumption was it was um, AI. It was okay. not an AI, uh, it was just heretic. But it was yeah. Dark Age of Technology heretic, and that's not to say that that's not more dangerous or as well not more dangerous than they are but that's not like not dangerous in and of itself um so i have, I have a fairly good idea of what would happen but what would have happened if i put the uh the jewel on myself uh it would have become a recurring part of your character and you would have got a bunch of character buffs like, i probably <laughs> would have given you like auto sanguine and things um like a best quality auto sanguine uh a few other things but then you also would have had this voice living in your head um, I presume it was some kind of helper helper software that runs the place. Yeah, I didn't have it mapped out in exact detail. Um, I think that's definitely a valid pitch. What probably would have happened is I would have adapted what it was according to what made sense for the character who got it um, and how their arc went. But uh, like helper software would have been extremely valid had it been um, Creed who got it, who I was vaguely expecting to be one of... I was expecting it to likely be either Creed or Ollie. Uh, I probably would have just eaten that rock straight up. Yeah, no, yes. I, mean, I, I don't think I even would have considered you not going for the immediate spoop artifact that says, please, pick me. Um, Ollie, I Did think you? it was always... I, I, it was a 50-50 with you, Ollie, because um, mm-hmm. your munchkin instincts are strong, and they pull you in two simultaneous directions, the urge for power and the urge to avoid risk. Um, and in this instance, uh, to avoid risk, one out. I, for the record, thought that you handled that perfectly correctly, both like in character and out. Um, 
taking it would have been a perfectly valid option, but in terms of, like, you're in Astartes, and you see a horror of old night, so rather than take chances, you destroy everything you can and get the fuck out of Dodge whilst it's yeah. been, uh, before it uh, has a chance to fuck you over. That was p- definitely the version of events that made sense within the context of your training, to my mind. Yeah. yeah. Funnily, funnily enough as well, there's been recent uh, developments in lore from the Blackstone Fortress games that suggests the men of iron are literally that. They are brain transplanted <laughs> humans that were digitized and stuck into servitude, basically servitude. Wait, really? I, I so that could have been that thing. I don't like the men of iron. I'm not fine back. I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of it either, but like, <laughs> it's like the model. first, it's first a cool model. thing we do, run into a men of iron production facility. What does Ollie do? Shoots it in the head it's... immediately. <laughs> It's it's a it's a cool. They're cool models, and I don't even mind that explanation. I just think that they work better undefined. Honestly, knowing what they are removes some of the mystery and horror and legend from it. It's something where you should fill in your own head canon, to my mind. It's like Legions two and eleven. They they should never say who they are, even though I'd love the Rainbow Warriors to get recanonized, and I guess fuck the Vanquishers. I think is the other one. Um, yeah, it's not going to happen. Yeah, it, 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 it's not just that it's not going to happen, it's that it shouldn't happen. It would make it actively worse if it did. And and for me, like, fleshing out the Men of Iron falls into the same bracket. Um, especially because it makes the narrative of them falling to chaos less compelling. Eh, anywho. Um, yeah, it, it, like I say, it, it, I had a vague plan for what it was and what its power set was, and the idea was it would, like... It was the thing that had been absorbing people and powering the evil king that ruled over the area, and then some great hero in distant times past manages to disable it just long enough to force it into sleep mode, whereupon it hibernates until it finds uh, a likely candidate to possess again. And the tiny Marothan garrison never offered it anyone who would have been, you know, anything like what it wanted. And then Space Marines waltz in, and naturally, of Havoc Squad, Mackie is easily the most enterprising and um, attractive individual, so he's like speed track lured down there whilst it's giving the runaround to everyone else in the castle. And, he th- uh, and the, the thought is like, oh, naturally, why would they ever turn us down? This is going to be great for everyone. Oh my fuck, what are you doing with that gun? So yeah. Any other narrative questions? Nope. Cool. How much did I piss Wesleyan off by back chatting him? A modest amount, but he he was already pretty pretty pissed off with the the whole the whole situation, and was just kind of looking of some uh, looking for someone to make an example of. I'm still we'll still see what happens with when he slops back in Nazim. I strongly suspect Yannick is going to switch characters at this point. I'm a bit sad about that. I'd love to keep Nazim, even if he's just a librarian. Um, but you know, we'll see how it goes. I just laughed about how you had to change track when I started talking about the <laughs> talking about North and Doom. It's like you bastard. <laughs> but I learned it by watching you. Yes, but you weren't supposed to be watching. The custodies are glorious golden hawk boys, and they don't do anything wrong. So let's do some next point. Plot progression. Does anyone feel like he made significant plot progression this session? And if so, what? We convicted a criminal and he ended up becoming the leader of a squad. Didn't convict Michelko, he got off. He, con- he conducted the trial for Michelko and he was given an appropriate form of... Uh, how to put this? You managed to punish him even though he got off. Yeah, I, I'm fully aware that he Mitchell Coe was assigned to the post that suits his particular talents best. Oh, I know. I know no, he wasn't. He's rampantly unqualified for the position, for the position you gave him. You he's sarcastic a back, dick. He's a, back, he's a backstabbing little cockbite, and I put him in a destroyer squad. He's exactly where he needs to be. So, resolve the Mitchell Coe situation. Anything else? No? Okay. If y'all don't feel like you made any significant plot progress this session, that's fine. I mean, it was a. So a wrap-up, yeah, really? Yeah, it was a wrap-up session. Okay, in that case, character development. Does anyone feel like they developed their characters this session? If so, how? Mm. No? Okay. Well, I'm trying to find a way to phrase it, but, uh, like, 
Kuzco's backstabbing tendencies have died down quite a bit. Because, like, I mean, yeah, yeah. again, trying to find a way to phrase it, but like throughout the whole thing, the amount of times where you were effectively throwing out a, here's an opportunity to lay everything at the feet of uh, Captain Carpy, mm-hmm. and people were being like just honest. And it's that sort of thing where, like, deep down my temptation was to do the atypical, you know, like, kick someone in the shin and mm-hmm. be like, no, just lay it at his feet. But it's like, I don't know, uh, let's just be honest. I took that to be because you were in front of people, and Cusco usually Cusco usually betrays people in the dark. I mean, yeah. But, he, like, Harpy wasn't necessarily there, so... Other ones as well. Still, Cusco grows but, yeah. to about the Anything else? Nope, fair dues. Uh, excellence of roleplay. Does anyone feel like anyone else roleplayed particularly well? Yeah, I'd say it's uh, like fairly typical. Uh, Benji's professionalism, even in the face of uh, potential um, repercussions towards his own character. I was scrupulously honest. Fair, fair. Anything else? <laughs> Creed's dodging of a singular issue throughout his entire speech for the custodian. He uh, he did kind of simultaneously own it and abdicate responsibility. Yep, that's what I mean. Glad he didn't ask about the mechanic. Didn't even really have time for it, honestly. And also, like, there were so many other things in the report that needed to be addressed. And and as I clarified at the start of the session, Koya didn't actually make much mention of the mechanic and not being deployed. And with the air war, there was even a good argument that they potentially never really had the opportunity for it. I completely forgot what this essence of roleplay for Clatter Mods was. Oh yeah, admitting and yet admitting responsibility yet abdicating fault, I guess. Anything else? Uh I would say Carl for just the sort of look, I should never have been in that position to begin with. Let's go following Okay. Let me just work out your XP total then, folks. I'm back. So that's I'll just get out of the calculator because I'm lazy. The real question is, with this infusion of XP, have we gone up to the next bracket and could thus can we take upgrades from the next bracket? Yeah, do we become rank two? Actually we no, should just, do. Just, just, just check the fucking just check the, the scaler. <laughs> I think if it's three thousand XP, um we only need a casual three hundred and fifty. Four. <laughs> well, you're not getting three hundred and fifty from a single session, am I right? But we could do, because we completed a campaign, maybe, I don't know, who knows, maybe, I don't know. Did you complete a campaign, or did the campaign complete you? You know what, I feel that the real friends we made along the way was the campaign all along. Well, the real campaign was the friends we made along the way. I don't know. So, I make that out to be 625 XP for session number 14. That's 10 points of plot progression, resolving the Michel Co situation. 10 points of character development. Cusco grows about betrayal. I don't know why I phrased that that way. Uh, 30 points, excellence of roleplay. Koya's scrupulous honesty. Coatlemox admitting responsibility yet advocating fault. And Cusco throwing everyone under the bus. Plus 75 standard for the penultimate time. Plus 500 for your time skip. I think that's oh, that's so cool. rank two. Uh, 625 was the total. I mean, so we can work out. So I think total XP at the end of the campaign... Uh, well, total XP from both campaigns now equals 3,271, I think. <laughs> cool. Which brings us on to everyone's favourite part of the session. It's the highlights. Benji, do you have any highlights for that session? I think how to phrase it. Do you want um, to come back to you? Yeah, come back to me. Holly, do you have any highlights for that session? Um, 
being uh being lead prosecutor and failing in every way possible. <laughs> Ollie goes full Lyle Hutz. <laughs> 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 oh dear. Well, Malco Totec goes full line of once. We've got, we've got to plenty draw. of hearsay and conjecture. Those are kinds of evidence. We, we've <laughs> got to draw your fucking armor with like a tiny Lionel Hutz poorly tied red tie over the top <laughs> of it. Oh dear. Um, cool. Any any other uh, highlights, Ollie? Um, the imminent feeling of death when we were inside the. Uh, Inside the the custodies uh, interview. Yeah, I was kind of expecting simultaneously more and less betrayal. Then, honestly, I thought you were going to more emphatically throw someone, almost didn't matter who, under the bus, and and yet that you'd like stick together more firmly, and you all kind of like threw people under the bus ha- half heartedly, but closed ranks every now and then whilst still trying to be honest. It was an interesting dichotomy. Anything else? Okay, that's me done, I think. Cool, cool. Carl, do you have any highlights for that session? Uh, well, see, again, it's uh, pretty much what you just said. Being able to wholeheartedly throw anyone and everyone else under the bus to not take responsibility. But I, uh, I guess hardcore scapegoating is a good way of putting it. Yeah. Fair, fair. Anything else? Um, uh, I don't believe so. Um, I'll pipe up again if there's anything else I can think of. Fair, fair. Creed, do you have any highlights for that session? Yeah. A couple of more quotes, although the first one sort of cut off. It says, Meet at the battlefield of honesty. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good line. Anything else? Uh, the second quote: I was pegged by Lieutenant Coyer. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that that one. I just God of love. what a phrase. Well, just wait, 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 is, wait. The good news is now it's in the the, the highlights, <laughs> so I can't use it for the episode title. Anything oh. else? <laughs> uh, just mentioning chaos in front of a custodian. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going. I'm, we're going three for three on 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 things then. Anything else? I'm glad I can be such a source of entertainment to you, Creed. <laughs> Loved it. I love telling people about Ollie's stories. I constantly <laughs> bitch about the hats thing. <laughs> uh, this is, we never play games with QA. They fucking exploit the narrative. It's bullshit. <laughs> Because like, I played a game where a guy's character was called Hat, and his whole thing was changing a different hat for a different situation. I I like that though. I like dumb characters. I I mean, I still I I know I tell this story a lot, but like Jobus will remain. I think my favorite greater K continuity character. He he what had a tragic, such a beautiful what, arc. What, yeah, exactly. It was tragic. And yeah, it was a beautiful arc as he got thrown into the air by those yeah. exploding barrels. And Wait, which who was this? Jovis was the ship's chef at Creed. Oh, right? yes, I've the heard slow it. descent into yeah madness and inhumanity. Was yeah. so that the one whose family got um, like no, ranked. no, no the, the the other one. was the flyer, the pilot. Yeah. Jovis was a much briefer affair. I if I can find his like time flying image. Yeah, I think I've got it somewhere still. Yeah. Oh, if you search Jovis in Discord, you can find some of them. Probably. Um, sorry, any other any other highlights, Creed? Uh, that was it for me. Fair, fair. Benji, do you have your highlights formatted? Michel Co gets his just dessert. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you had that hidden, you sneaky little gutter snipe. I knew there was a chance that Ollie would cock it up. I knew. <laughs> I had every confidence in Ollie. I was genuinely surprised by that getting cocked up. The, the, I mean, it wasn't necessarily a me fool. It was it yeah. Was the the, the role just didn't roles. go your way. Your yeah. problem is you hang out with Carl too much. His bad luck's rubbing off on you. We, we trade yeah. it back and forth. Yeah. Um. What's the starting HP of a character in Dark Heresy? Thirty. Uh, not Dark Heresy. In this, sorry, thirteen thousand. Right. I want to say twelve, but um, it's worth double checking that it should it should say in the charge in section. Because you need to reach seventeen thousand XP total to get to rank two. It might be. 17,000 total, are you sure? Yeah. Page? Uh, 
58. 59 in the PDF. 59, thank you. Because, yeah, I know that the base XP buy would like from Gen was 1,000. Yeah, sorry, so it's 12,000 is for all of your advances and stuff, and then you get the 1,000 XP to spend. Yeah, oh, so. yeah, so that puts you at 13,000, so we need to gain um, 4,000 nice. XP then, so it would be the next campaign we rank up. Yeah, we're what, like 750, 1,000 short? We're about, we're about uh, 750 short. All right. Ah, yeah, you'll get there, though. But it is going to be a fairly long form campaign, is the thing. Uh, and we are getting bumped up to 100. Yeah, so. it'll be like, not next session. Next session will be your last 75 standard, and then every campaign, every session after that, from next campaign onwards, it'll be like plus 100 as your standard. Uh, I've been scrolling through the chat to find this Josie image after I jumped to it, and I've yeah. just scrolled past uh, you and throwing up after that eating challenge picture. Yeah. Yeah, that's the <laughs> yeah, I like that picture. Okay, I'm going to head off to bed anyway. Okay, 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 yeah, so dealing with Arking Puppy. Oh, that's fair. So right. no other highlights. Okay, cool. Right. Uh, I don't think I have any other highlights. So in that case, thank you all for a lovely session number 14. Anyone have any final words for the recording? Jobs are good.